<laughs> Big up the title, man. They they yeah. giving our viewers sixty days free on title. Sixty days free. It's title.com <laughs> forward slash drink champs. There Bam. we go, god damn it. What it good be hoping it's what it should be. This is your boy NAO NAA. What up is DJ EFN? And this is motherfucking Miller Timmy Crazy War Podcast, motherfucking Dream Champs, Happy Hour, and hey. all type of crazy shit. Make some love! <laughs> Right now, when you talk about the definition of CEO, when you talk about a person who stood by hip hop and put it on the likes of people, your favorite acts like Wu Tang Clan, mm. Big Pun, uh, 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 Dead Prez, uh, uh, Mob Deep, uh, these are people that you probably wouldn't even, you probably wouldn't even know if this guy, you know, gave Fat Joe a great opportunity. This guy is out here, and he's still out here. He's dated some of the most beautiful women in the world, so we're gonna get into that. We also heard he had the keys to a Vegas strip club by himself. <laughs> In a beautiful way, look, he's blushing. <laughs> in a beautiful way, this guy has been doing, you know, been out in this music industry, has kept it real. The street team if, game, street team He game. invented the street team. He invented yeah. it. If you look at the Wu-Tang Clan documentary, which I think is one of the most uh, greatest, beautifulest documentary, you can see him in there. He actually has hair. Phenomenal hair, too. He looked like no. the Fonz. <laughs> If you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about my good friend, Steve motherfucking Red. <laughs> now, now that is a debate. That is a, a hip hop debate, right? Uh, who invented the street team? Okay. <laughs> hey, I, I mean, well, I know. But, but if you remember, okay. When uh, we did drink champs in LA in my office in mm -hmm. LA, mm -hmm. what Puff said. Mm -hmm. Okay, I forgot. I forgot. Damn, yeah, there was so much going on there. What did he say? He's, he did admit that. Yeah, he did. Why Puff that. is trying to say that he? No, 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 no he never. Uh, you know, he never. I mean, right. me and Puff were always right. close. So, I mean, right, right. but how did you develop even that, right, Steve? Because at the time, hip hop was just it was like Billboard uh, uh, um, driven mm -hmm. and things of that nature. How did you say, you know what, I'm gonna get a, a, a crew and you know, because like it's basically like like but, did something but, 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 inspired but to that. It was, it was more than that. Okay. So I was really dyslexic as a kid. Mm. Um, we're all dyslexic at yeah, this yeah, table, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> so, you know, where all Jews go, mm -hmm. when they get old, they move down to Miami. So my, my, my grandparents moved to Miami. Okay. And um, my grandfather called me. Your bro my, gra my grandfather called me. Okay. And he said, um, you got to get your shit together. Wow. You're going to end up dead or you're going to end up in jail. Wow. He goes, why don't you go work with your dad? Mm -hmm. So my dad had a label mm -hmm. called Spring Records. So that was... Fatback Band, who put out the first hip hop mm. record. Wow. Yeah. Billy Jackson, wow. Joe Simon, and, wow. James, and James Brown. Wow. And James Brown? Through Polygram, yes. Wow. wow. So he sent me on the road when I was 18 years old. I didn't go to college. Mm. So I'm visiting radio stations and visiting people my age now. Right. Right. And I was like, what the fuck do I want to hang out with a 50 year old right. for? Yeah. So I ended up going back to the colleges. Mm. So I knew what an intern was, you know, where I would be like, all right, I'm just going to send you some records. <coughs> you know, nobody was making really T-shirts at the time. Yeah. There were no really poster boards. There wasn't any of that. Right. And I just started, so I started zigzagging across the country. Mm. And I just put a network of people together. Mm. So, and that, that's how it really all so started. So that's a precursor of like street teams and region, so regional this, street teams. This is 1981. Wow. 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 This is 1982. So, you know, then... My dad gave Russell his first deal. Russell said, "Yeah, wow. with at the, Polygram at Spring with okay. a record called okay. Dollar Billio by Jimmy Spicer." Mm. Okay. So I kept on just they just kept me on the road, mm. and I, I just started networking and just meeting like all these colleagues. When you say they kept you on the road, you talking about like artists, or are you talking about the label? Well, I. The label was really my dad's label, but okay. I really wasn't working for him. He was just trying to see if right. I had any heart and any balls to do this. Right. Okay. And right. I, you know, don't forget there was no GPS. You would have to right. take out a map and just figure yeah. out how you're going to get from Atlanta to Alabama, oh, yeah, and just yeah. like the, if you the, had the maps, make, the paper no, maps. Yeah. Right? yeah, yeah, yeah. The, no cell phones, right. so you'd have to walk around. You know, I, every night I, I right. left, there'd be like ten dollars worth of quarters, mm. and just so okay. So, so then when was the, when was it the point where you said this is the street team like like this this was that was 1988 because other was other labels hiring you to do that or this was something you was doing on so, your own so you had a marketing company I had, I had before there was Lab there was a Stephen Rifkin company okay right right so that was the marketing so company. the SRC so, was SRC. before Lab yeah I thought right. SRC was after Lab 
it just the, the it, it, it resurfaced. Right. Right. Okay, that was the yeah, second yeah, record company. Right. Okay, so, <laughs> the Stephen Rifkin Company was an independent promotion company, mm. right? So I, I ran out, moved, met a chick, moved out to LA, right. hooked up with a company called Delicious Final. Mm. Yeah, they had Tone great, Loke, great, and, yeah, great label, Tone right. Loke and Young MC. Mm. So I, I brand did, new heavies were on yeah, there. Yeah, did the whole campaign for all those records, and it was just now I'm putting the street team together. Mm. They they moved they moved, and I really always wanted to have my own company. So I was like, you know, I'm going to keep your guys' office. So I think I had three thousand dollars to my name, wow. and I made brochures. Wow! And I was going to New York for um, my cousin's wedding, what? and I sent um, all the brochures out to all the different labels, and I came back with one hundred forty thousand dollars worth of business mm. from wow. brochures. Yeah, like I said, but I sent it to every record company, wow. and I just said, "This is what we're going to handle. We're going to handle." BET, we're going to handle MTV, we're going to handle college radio, we're going to handle mix show radio. Wow. And it was never about, and it was never about mainstream radio. Wow. Right. Wow. And, um, knock on wood, I mean. Is, is that where the mix show power summons came from? Well, like, because, like. Th- that was, that came from Renee, but that, yeah. th- that came, like, in the mid-90s. And that, okay. and that was after, uh, How Can I Be Down, too. I yeah. think How Can I Be Down started aspiring all that stuff. Okay. Uh, what was well, Jack the Rapper was the first one. No, no, wow. the original. That's yeah, the original. Exactly. 100%. Yeah, wow, the original. Wow, wow. Yeah. So it's Jack the Rapper, then it's what? Then it's How Can I Be Done. Wow. And then it's... Mix then Show it's Power Summit. Summit. But yeah. there was a convention that I went to. The College Radio... Uh, um, the, Mag- Ga- the Gavin Report. Yeah, they, but, yeah. But my dad took me to a convention when I was 18 years old. I mean, mm-hmm. it was just... It was in Miami at the Diplomat Hotel, and it was called the Non Convention. And it was mostly a sales convention. Wow. But it the, just happened right now. Yeah, but the yeah. pussy there was like... Holy shit. You like, said the pussy? The pussy was okay. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't ready. Yeah, I, wasn't ready. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, it was just uh-huh. ridiculous. I was like, wow, yeah. I think I really want to be in this record business. Right. And this is the, all right, so, boom, now you develop the street team. Now, loud. I know I'm bouncing around all the day, yeah. but let's just, yeah. let's just go, because this was, this was like quite essential. Like, if you were, you know, from an artist that just wanted to stay an artist, that was known that loud let you do what the fuck you, have, you want to do. But I gotta be honest with you, it started with Wu Tang Clan. I can remember me seeing Protect Your Neck for the first time, and I'm like, no one cares about these people. Like that was like just different. Like so, like I, what, what 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 was it? What was it like meeting? I, I know we spoke on lightly. Who, who were before. the first artists signed to love? Because I remember seeing a... Uh, Twister. 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 Twister was the first artist. And so then Mob Deep shortly after? No. Nah. So no? it was Twister. It was a, a group out of L.A. called Mad Cat that yeah. had caught a nice little buzz in L.A. Then The Licks. The Licks? The Licks, okay. And this is your time in L.A. that's inspiring these, signing yeah, these I, artists? I mean, that started in L.A. So that's why, because you're, you're, you're coming out of New York at some point, and it's, you're signing these underground L.A. artists. Exactly. The Licks, Exhibit, all these guys. So Exhibit, Exhibit was after. It was The Licks. And then I was in New York for my 31st birthday. Mm. Mm. And Rizzo just showed up after me trying to reach him for three weeks. And he was um, Rakim? He was Prince Rakim. Prince Rakim. 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 So. so he comes up. I'm in an office no bigger than this, no bigger than this table. Mm-hmm. And um, I was with East Swift from the Alcoholics. Mm. And he goes, do you mind if I bring the guys up? East Swift from the Alcoholics is saying this. No, Rizzo, Rizzo. Rizzo is saying that. Okay. So the whole, the whole clan comes up. Office was the size of this table. Right. They put the record on. They stopped performing. Is it protect your neck? It was protect your neck. Okay. Some guy comes running through the office, and to this day, I don't know if I was set up by Rizzo or if oh. the guy really worked. Oh, the right. 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 And he says, "That's that shit." And he walks out. I've never seen him again. Right. Right. No, but I, it was a plan. This is what I want. That's what I want to know from you, right? At the time, you're a hip hop fan. I, and everything in hip hop, right? If you was to bring even Capone and Noriega, yeah. people would compare us to Mob D. Uh, if you was to pray, prepare, you know, it's, it's you know, they always they, you granddaddy, that you rock him, yeah. Nas rock him. At the time when it's nine motherfuckers, there is not one fucking thing that you can compare them to. So I, did that? Did that? Did that frustrate you? No, it didn't frustrate me because, and it seemed I, it wasn't intimidating either. No, like so many I mean, people. No, just <laughs> don't forget. It. I never considered myself an A and R guy, right? Mm. right? I, I always, always considered myself a promotion guy. Okay. I mean, that, that's what I came first. Right. Okay. So, before there was research, mm. there was re- right. I had the street team. Mm-hmm. So, 
my guy in Detroit mm. is Tell calling it. my A and R guy on the West Coast. Mm. This record is blowing the fuck up. Yeah. Like, oh, so they so, white they white labeled it prior to I, no, they, yeah, they were doing their own. They, their they, own they, they oh, their, oh, one of the original yeah. records. Yeah, oh, I never knew that. Well, so that yeah. they, that original video was them doing it. The, oh yeah. yeah. Oh fuck. Yeah. 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 They were doing college ones. Oh, they were going around yeah. college ones. I'm thinking. I'm thinking. When I first saw that, I was like, Nah, there's no record label like that loves them, man. Like you know, when I first my, my first time seeing it because you know you had all these hype yeah. William videos at the time. Nah, you so, see that? Hype, hype, hype later. Hype we need hype his first video. Wait a minute. <laughs> Did we just go there? <laughs> no, 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 open up both right now. Come on, there. Yo, how many bottles are you opening, man? Just one. Just one. <laughs> I gotta take this back to the. I'll buy it. I'm well, sure they'll let you get it again. Yeah, come on. They ain't gonna steal it, goddamn. We'll do, but, okay, hold on. You gave hype his first? I'm almost positive. Yeah. Okay, I mean, and this was with Wu Tang Clan? This is, this is Wu Tang when y'all walking this, this up the is, wall? No, this is Canopy Also Simple with, uh, with Ray and Ghost. Damn. I didn't even realize that was hype. Can it all? It's so simple. I can't sing. Hold on. Don't let me finish that. So, okay. So, we're bouncing all around. Meet, meet, the prison says there's nine of us. Because was it ten at first? No, it was eight. It was everybody but Kappa was away. Kappa so. was away. Okay. So, you meet these guys. How was the first time meeting Old Dirty Bastard? I mean... <laughs> Every time I see an old dirty bass, he was digging up his nose. I swear to God. No, <laughs> like, no. like, God bless him. Like, every time, I've never really, I, don't, I think I've gave old dirty bass in the five. Like, I met dirty bass like, like 45 times in my life, and I probably gave him like a, a real five, like twice. Because I've always been like, yo, come on. He's just always, he was just always a foul character around me. Uh, <laughs> with me, he had a heart of gold. Like, right. I mean, right. I was like big bro to him. I right. mean, it, it was weird. I right. mean, it never had one ounce of, you know. Mm -hmm. Like the day that they ran when he ran on the stage in the Grammys, mm -hmm. when he said Wu Tang is for the children, mm -hmm. I lived across the street, mm -hmm. and I already knew that we lost. Like mm -hmm. you know, we got oh. the call, uh -huh. and um, he's like, "Well, how come you're not going?" I said, "We already lost, man." He goes, "I just bought this two thousand dollar suit, this, that, so on, so <laughs> on." So after he jumps on stage, who did he lose to Lauren Hill? I don't know. Nah, come nah. on, has Google that? Yeah, continue. Um, when he goes on stage, he takes, you know the. the the trophy, he comes to my house, knocks on the door. Mm. He's like, "How'd I do?" Mm. <laughs> that was like hip hop's first viral moment. Like, like that was like, viral. he would do that all the time. I saw him, and how can Up I be down? down? Yeah, where it was, I think Capleton was performing. Were you there when he jumped on stage and he did some crazy stuff? And it was he like interrupted the whole show. No, I'll tell you a story. Um, we were doing a performance at Gavin. Gavin, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, New Orleans. New Orleans. Mm. So, um, we're flying there I'm with my uh, wife at the time was pregnant with our first child, mm. and um, and I feel I like you're private. I feel like you're private. I feel like he was like the first dude I knew flying private planes. Yeah, we'll, we'll get back to that. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get back to that. Let's make some noise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I thought you said pirate plane. No, like, he was flying pirate planes. Like, I remember <laughs> Steve taking pi our private planes. Like it was like it was like uh, changing drawers. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Why well, they out there? Them loud boys. Go no, ahead. but th th this was commercial. Okay. So I hear dirty coming. Which is the first time I flew first class. It was the first first class ticket that I. Mm. Mm. That I paid for. So okay. we're sitting in first class, huh. and I hear Dirty, and he goes to his seat, and I don't know what happened, but he starts going off. Okay. And then the flight attendant comes to me. They said, um, <laughs> Mr. Jones, his last name was Jones, mm -hmm. is requesting to see you. Okay. <laughs> He's not in first class? No. Okay. He's on Electra's budget at the time. Okay, okay. Um, so I go, I talk to him, and he just, you know, had a feeling about the plane. All right. So I was like, shit, maybe we, then let's, if you're having this feeling, I'm not right. going to take a chance. Let's get the fuck off. Right. He right. goes, Are you really going to get off with me? I'm like, yeah. He goes, no, nah, then we're good. Like, as <laughs> long as I know that we're, we're, we're together. <laughs> we go down together. <laughs> I'm like, you, I'm, like you, you, I'm like, you sure? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I'm positive, yeah. right? I'm panicking the whole fucking flight. One right. little fucking yeah. bump, I'm just like, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> so, and, he, and he's out like a light sleeping, and, and like four hours, you know, my hands are like. Mm. So, so I guess what I'm trying to ask you, right, is 
this is like probably the biggest gamble, right? Because having a nine people, um, like having a four man group. Is is fucking two man? Two man. Yeah, that's a one man group. I mean, just that's just, yeah. <laughs> right. so how? Because how? Because I, I imagine in the beginning they all had one manager. I imagine in the beginning they all just listened to RZA. I imagine you can you can refute this. This is just me being a fan because I, uh-huh. I really was too young. I, I'm, I'm like a couple of years later, but I imagine from when I see it, when I see, look at the documentary, what was my um RZA brother name? Divine. 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 I can imagine yeah. like it was when it was all peaches and cream. But when is the moment where you say to myself, when you say to yourself, holy shit, I got rock, the, which we're going to be considered the new rock stars and they're fucking signed to me. Like, when does that moment hit you? It never really. No, come on, Steve. Nah, I, I mean, I was just, you know, I found out we went gold the day you got, son got shot. Damn, I saw uh, that. Um, and this is the first album. This is the first album. Okay. 36 chains. Yeah, and all, you know, my brother's with me, who was my partner in lab. God right. bless him. God bless him. Make some noise for his brother. <laughs> um, so, it was like, I never really thought of it. it to me, it was just always, was, I always felt we were the underdog. So, was, to me, it was just always taking it to the next level. So, if we went to gold, how are we going to get to platinum? Every, right. Everything like that. So, And let me ask you, when you say... It's great what you just said. Felt like he was the underdog. I have to ask. Well, underdog compared to like Puff Daddy, what they had going on, Def Jam, or was it the industry? Universal as a whole. Well, we were at BMG at the time. But what I'm saying, me, really, just because I didn't know how to read or write until I was 12, 13 years old. You know, my my dyslexia, me getting in trouble. It was like my family always looked at me like, oh, he's, you know, the the crazy one, this, that, you know. Mm. My brother went to school. I didn't go to school. He had a real job. You know, he worked at Electra Records. He was the youngest national wow. promotion guy. Wow. Uh, wow. That's what I'm talking about. God damn it. What's his name again? Jonathan. 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 Right. Puff was Puff. Did, did you have a criteria when you were looking at these artists? Like you wanted something for that you liked, or something that you thought was going to resonate? Or were you, like that's how were you? Well, that's a great question. question. Yeah, that's, that's, a great that's an amazing question. question. So right. with Wu Tang, I have a corny saying: "The streets don't lie." Right. Right. So my feedback from the street team right. was just giving me that information that I just knew right. we had something. Right. When Mob Deep came up to the office. I mean, Prodigy wasn't there, but it was Havoc and just Twin, okay, Twin, yeah. you know, know that, 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 yeah. that whole crew. And they created Ruckus from the second we had the first meeting. And I was like, you know what? This is the perfect follow-up to what I'm going to tell right, you. Like the energy. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, as a person that was living in the streets, like after Wu-Tang, like, like I'm going to tell you the truth, I'm being honest, this is one, one No one really thought Wu-Tang was going to like, not only get signed, but win. Because there's a difference. You, and to us in the hood, getting signed, we thought we won. That shit yeah. meant nothing. Getting signed was one part of it. You have to actually go out there and make some amazing records yeah. and things like that. But when Wu Tang and the fact that you know you would always see these artists like they'll they'll come out and they'll get a little success and then they'll get polished and then they'll some for Wu Tang it was like it didn't matter like if one of them were Hollywood like if Method Man wore another. Uh, pants or something it would be like you knew Ghostface would say something about it like why the fuck are you doing that like they all kept each other balanced and this was the first time that I seen hip hop like develop from star from just being stardom into mega stardom where Mm. these guys were in Japan and Ichiban and uh, Konichiwa and shit like that and like you know what I'm saying like like this this this, so I'm wondering like you you didn't sit back and just was like wow I didn't have time wow Wow. I didn't have to. But don't forget, there was Lad. There was still the marketing company. So at that time, wow, I was still promoting pretty much every hip hop record in the business. Mm. The only record that oh, I promoted. Oh, you're still working for other labels. Yeah. Mm. So SRC still a functioning company. Yeah. As a street team or marketing? No, the marketing street team right. and, wow. and, and consulting the labels. Yeah. Wow. So Leo calls and them had to be mad as shit at you. Come on. <laughs> I mean, to this day, Leo doesn't want to help me. Get out of here. No, I was just playing around. No. I, was, you get, I, was, I was on the nose. Get out of here. Because I think, I think you might have scared them up. I think you... What I do mean, you think? 
I mean, we just, I mean, like I said, I go back with Russell since I'm 16 years old, right? right? But um, Leo, on the other hand, I mean. Right. Oh, man, I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't expect to hear this. Yeah? So when was, when was the moment you and Leo, you think, fell out? We never really fell out, you know, okay. but when I realized, like, this is really a business and, it, and it's not love, oh, wow. when, he, when he tried to steal mm-hmm. Flex. Oh, okay, that's right. From Flex was down yeah. um, 60 minutes of funk, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. and Leo came in, tried to sneak and snoop him. Okay, all right. It makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, they don't play that shit. You guys, you guys do not play that shit when it comes to that. So, but what, what, what is that from CEO to CEO? Um, okay, hit, hit, hit this out, though. You set up Leo to, to have one of the, the biggest acts ever because when you signed Loud, I think that um, still to this day is one of the most genius hip hop deals ever. Because you mean Wu Tang when you signed Wu? I'm yeah. sorry. I'm yeah. just, I, I, I'm, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. When you signed Wu Tang, still, but you allowed them to, to to go out. And and Method Man was the first one that was signed. To Def Jam, yeah, Actually, Dirty was the first one signed. Dirty was signed to Electra first? Yeah. My fucking history is fucking getting slipped up. How close was it to the deal that y'all did? I heard, wasn't it like right Dirty, around the same time? No, nah, it was maybe a month before. Because I thought before, Bring the Pain. Right? Yeah. I thought Bring the Pain. Uh, well, Beth came, Beth came out of all the solo one. acts. That yeah. broke out. Came first. Don't forget, he okay. had the MET H.O.D. record. Right. Right? Yeah, yeah, that's so right. That, which was a Wu-Tang record, yeah. right? M.E.T. So, yeah, so that jump started... His Math. solo career, yep. right. right? Then we came with Cream. Well, cash rule, right. right? So that was Ray, Go, not, I mean, Ray, Deck, and Meth on the hook. Uh-huh. Right. All right. So, and that record just. So Def Jam signed him from there, or? Def Jam signed him from the MBT or record. Let record. So let me ask you, I know I'm bouncing all over the place. Did they have to come to you for clearance? No. So our deal was, don't forget, start off as a singles deal. The whole clan as the, a single deal. The whole clan started off as a singles deal. Wow, and this is how many, how many singles? Just the one <laughs> single? Amazing. Just one single, and if okay. it hit a certain plateau, it automatically turns into an album. Okay. So within the first week, we did 30,000 right. the first week. Wow. Right? So, Hard copies. Not this shit that they're doing now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it automatically goes into, goes into the album. Right. Leo and Russell offered mass, I think it was a buck seventy five, which was wow. in those days wow. like five million dollars. Right. Right and he offered math that, you said. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And there was no I mean, as much as I wanted to match it, Ooh. there was no way I could match it. At the time. Wow. At, at the time. Wow. So um and he no. wanted to be at Def Jam. Anyway, so I was like, you know what? This is 91, 92 we talking about. No, right? this is 93, 94. 93, 93, yeah. 94. Okay, my bad. So, in the late 80s, I was managing New Edition for a minute. Oh, shit. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's left field. Why you that one? Here, Mike? Come on, let's go. Ahead. Go ahead. So, um, and Ralph was wanting to leave the group. And everything. And Bobby, Ralph Trezor. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and that's why Johnny came in. So I was like, the group will always be bigger than the solo, besides, ah. my, besides Michael. Right? Ah. So I was like, all right. You know, and to me, it was about survival. Right. Right. I, I, I didn't consider myself, I didn't have an A&R staff yet. Right. I had one guy in LA. I didn't have Maddie or Free yet or right. anything like that. So it was like. So you didn't have to sign off to Matt. It was basically. But the, he did. He came to you as a, as a respect. No they, no, they had to. In the right. deal, we okay. had first right. Okay, first right refused you. Yeah. yeah, that's what I was, that's what I was getting at. So yeah. that's. Um, you, you ever regretted that? You ever regretted, like. I mean, th- there's a lot of things. RCA wouldn't have paid for it, you know. Wow. Um, I mean, when Jay and Day came. Right. We know? get into that. We get into yeah. that. We get into that. Let's stay on Wu-Tang right now. We get, we get, so, what? I mean, I, I had a report to RCA. So, wow. we, we came out of the blue. RCA's your distribution? Yeah. We we came out of the blue. We were based in LA. I was cre- creating havoc, you know. I was bonafide fucking nuts. Right. Right? I had a temper, everything else like that. Right. So, I wasn't allowing. Right. Um, RCA to shit on us you know right. and then we got lucky there was a guy who actually <coughs> turned into a brother of ours a guy by the name of Mojo Nicosia okay, heard it. who was a promotion guy at RCA uh-huh. and we just brought him into our family and you know this this guy just he stayed at RCA right. and just busted his ass and he went on a van and he zigzags across the country with the group wow on RCA's dime you know, then, you know, and, and then you know he got hit by a truck. 
helping promote, you know, promoting oh, our stuff. So, right. and it was like when he God got, bless him. yeah, when he, um, when he was halfway healed, I said, fuck RC, you're coming with us. Wow. You know, and then him and my brother, wow. and then there's Rich Isaacson, they literally ran the company. Big up Rich Isaacson. Uh, he's at Def Jam now. He's at Def Jam now. So, they literally, you know, ran the company. Jonathan Mojo ran the whole streets and, and radio. Right. Rich ran the company. And it was really, the, you know, the four of us that just, you know, and then we brought in Maddie and then we brought in Free mm. as our A&R guys. And, you know. Because Lau had a motherfucking run, man. Holy moly yeah, yeah. guacamole. I mean, it, it defined like the classic era that people talk about in like the early to mid 90s of hip hop that like Lau to me defined it. Yeah. Defined yeah. It. Now, now, okay, boom. The clan drops thirty six chambers, right? You know you you know you got you know you got the new mega stars, right? Boom! But now Method Man, you um and Method Man is uh, at Def Jam. Jam. ODB the, is at Electra. Electra and Jizza. Jizza is at Geffen. Geffen, yeah, she was with a G. Boom! But then you come out with another classic. Wait, wait, but before that, okay. I'm trying to sign Mike Geronimo. Wow! Oh wow! Before Mark D, this is okay. This wow. is right around oh, yeah. at the same okay. time. So I meet Irv. Okay. And we couldn't get this fucking sample cleared. For I forget the name of the single, but mm. you know, but the point the point is real, is it? Was that whatever it? his first single was. Yeah, I think it was right. That. So we couldn't get the sample cleared. Uh-huh. And um and RC said, just don't waste your time on this. Just focus on Woo and just and shook ones is starting to bubble. Oh yeah, that was that, that was a great. Yeah. They, they were right. <laughs> but, but I don't know. But, okay. but if if we did the deal with her, mm, you would have got Jay maybe. Wow, a lot of shit. DMX, the DMX. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ja Rule. I mean, wow. it, it would have been, like been a game changer. It would have been, like been, like been a whole different story. Right. Mm-hmm. And then he went to TVT with Steve Gottlieb yeah. with Mike Geronimo. Wow, man. So who do you think is crazier? ODB or DMX? No, you got I, I manage DMX now. I know. I know. Uh, That's why I got the <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't look at it as crazy. I okay. mean, I, I look at it as just passionate, just genius. Okay. They're both. I mean, yeah. I mean, I wish, and I told him, like, I would have loved to have heard a conversation between the two of them. The two of them. I would have yeah. loved that too. But you got ten minutes to get one artist across the street. <laughs> ten minutes, right? And I'm just this is just for a rack of uh-huh. and you're gonna make ten million dollars. So you got old DB on the left <laughs> and you got damn Max on the right. They're both engaging, having fun, there's chicks around and shit like that. But there's one person you gotta get across the street. Just between the two of them? Between the two of them. Who? I would have probably had to go with Dirty. I mean, he was already he's, in the group. He's, he's, so you're saying Dirty is easier to work with than GMX? No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put words in his mouth. No, I'm not saying that. Well, I'm saying yeah. because he was already in the group. Mm. So he's mm. kind of like a team player already? Mm. I mean, it was mm. just like I already had that relationship with him. Right, right. So it's easy. Okay, yeah. it's easy. It's okay. Right, right. Okay. No, because you, let me just tell you something, Steve. You work with pun, pun, pun. You work with Fadjo. You work with some of the wildest boys. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, dead press, exhibit. Oh, my God. The alcoholics. Like, alcoholics. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're still crazy to this day. Yeah. Like, MOP. MOP, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, there's, there's people that people won't even be around, and you just did great business. 3-6 Mafia. 3-6 Mafia, which just had uh, DJ Paul yeah, on yeah. Um, Yeah, so, like, um, like, uh, you do have a business with, with, with hip hop's elite, but also hip hop's elite's crazies. It's well, I was fucking crazy. God damn, make some noise, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you and Leo, getting back to that for a second, right? Me and Leo are cool. It's just, yeah, you know, I know. I mean, I know. there's, there's, mm-hmm. but, uh, you know, Leo is about. Leo and his team, right. and you know, which I respect. You know, right. it's like fuck everybody else. You know? Right, I respect that. Yeah. Now, now this concert you're doing, mm-hmm. this is the second one or this is the first? This one? is the first one. This is the first one. Yeah. Because what's he doing? So we were going to do we were going to do it at the Prudential Center in Newark. In Newark, okay. And my heart really was like my my dream was always Radio City. Right, that's real. So um, when Radio City 
came available. Wow. Congratulations. I, I pulled it from the Prudential Center. Ooh. Mm. You're coming, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna, I'm definitely going to try to make it happen. <laughs> 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 we need you there, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, man, I think, I think for, for one, I think that this is so important. I think that you're setting another trend. The same way you did with the street teams, the same uh, street team, uh, the same way you did with Loud, the same way you did with innovative, out the box thinking, with signing people like Wu Tang. I think this is it as well. I commend it because the thing is, your legacy is so rich. Like Loud, um, um, I, 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 I feel sorry for sometimes for this generation when I look at this generation and they don't have powerhouse like a Loud and they don't have that rich history where, you know, back then, being from the hood and going to a record label, it was like going to paradise. Mm -hmm. Like, even though, like, you, you're still in fucking Chinatown or some shit, you know what I'm saying? You're not, like, in a luxury part of the city, but just being out of the city and just, I mean, being out of the hood and just... It's opportunity. You know, being yeah. opportunity is being able to sit down and smoke weed and get a haircut at a record label. Like, and I'm, I feel sorry that they don't really have that no more. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that home feeling. Like, you know, when I remember... You know, seeing Havoc and Beer, they would just be happy to go to Loud. Yo, I'm going to Loud. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, what the fuck? Is that a club? Like, yeah. like that's, that's how happy they were. Okay. Like, that day their, their album came out, mm -hmm. I shut the office down. We all went to the park to play ball. Mm. God damn it. This is a CEO of a CEO. God damn it. <laughs> you, can, you consider yourself that like an artist-friendly CEO? Because there's CEOs that don't fuck with artists at all. And then there's CEOs that I, there's CEOs like, I know I'm getting locked up. Call him, bro. <laughs> I mean, I never consider myself a CEO. I always uh. consider myself the artist first. Mm. And I think that's why mm. the labels mm. were probably always, always scared of me mm. because I never looked at a budget. It was like, if the artist really needs that and it makes sense, mm. All right. we'll go and, you know, right. if it's me sending Rich or, or Jonathan or Mojo, right. like, we're doing whatever the fuck we have to do mm. to really right. to get this done. Right, that's real. And this will get back to this concept. You got Mark D. I got everybody. Ooh. Are you going to tell us some surprises you got? Come on. You got, come on, let's tell us now. I mean, on. are you committing? Well, you know, listen, don't, Randy, this, is you committing? This, 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 this is for the fans. Ray, this is for your fans. This is for your fans. No, because I really want the people to come out. Um, I, I forget, um, who's on the list that you got? Let's, I got everybody. So I got Wu. Wow. And when you say Wu Tang Clan, you ain't oh, talking the about full, the, 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 all of them. Yeah. Um, got Wu. Yeah, you one of the people in the world that get all, yeah. all of them on the phone. Uh, uh, was you was you managing Wu Tang too before we go? Not one really, man. I mean, me and Rizzo are like brothers, so okay. it's like okay. Divine is the manager. Okay, okay. Wu. Okay, Wu. Mob, mob, and hopefully there'll be special guests doing prodigies. Yeah, versus. man, I, I might come like, out and do some prodigy for We give it up. We give it up too much That's right that. now. That's I would. I would. Okay. Um, uh -huh. Joe and Remy are doing pun. Okay. Mm. Yeah. I gotta do both sets. Yeah. See, yeah. Steve Rippin is managing me right now. He's yeah. he, he working me both games. Let's go. <laughs> Dead Prez, uh -huh. MOP. Wow. Um, alcoholics? Alcoholics. Wow. Exhibit. <laughs> Three Six Mafia? Three Six Mafia. <laughs> Flex, Pete Rock. Mm. Um, I'm trying um, to see what other label can, what other label can pull this off. I don't think so. And this is a tour. Let's be clear. I don't know if it's a tour yet. We're going to see how the first one goes. No, it's a tour, Steve. It's a tour. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I mean, it'd be a great tour, but he's being careful. He's it's like, a headache let's tour. Let's see how the first one goes. Don't get me wrong. It's a headache tour because this is like a, a venue tour. This is, uh, this is a summer jam tour. Like, but this, could be a, this could be a festival. Yeah, this is yeah, a festival. Definitely. That's, that's, what, I'm, that's, that's yeah. what I'm trying to get at. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, uh, no, we got everybody. And the surprise guests are going to be the surprise guests. Right. Holy shit, Elliot Wilson. Okay. <laughs> Tell Elliot and I say hello. Oh. oh shit! I ain't answering this question. He got to realize. <laughs> um, so, um, so, uh, so you, you don't think? I think this, I think it could be a tour. I think it could be a tour. I think no, um, it definitely could be a tour. Right. But let's you know, because because Wu, Wu, Wu by themselves. Like I'm not gonna lie. I had a, a show with Wu Tang in San Diego, and that was one of the aircraft carriers. Yes. And oh my God, still to this day, like, I still like get in straight fan mode. Like when I start seeing them, like, and then it's crazy because, you know, they're older now. And you know, before they used to clash on stage and like, and now they're older and like, so they like, they know exactly where to be on right. stage at what time. And it's like, it's like, why, for me, it's like watching the four tops or the, you know, like, like, you know, um, yeah. 
the temptations, temptations or something like you know what I'm saying. But our version of the temptations because right. they're not you know dancing and holding the mic and throwing it on the floor yeah. and bringing it back up. But it's our version of right. that. You know what I mean? I love to see it. Like I, we did Australia a year ago. Okay, at at the Sydney Opera House, mm. and it, I mean it just worked to perfection. I mean. Mm. Mm. That was real. Is that is that is that your favorite group you ever discovered? I know you can't say that because you're politically nah, correct. No, nah, I mean, it's not, I mean, it's, it's your most proud moment. You know, we can't yeah, love our know, kids more than the other, but you know, but, but you know, they're my first child. Yeah, say, okay, okay, right? there you go. On my, right. on my first plaque. Okay, wow, that's, right. that, that's um, real. And you know, with with the guys, I you know, I have a relationship with all of them. Mm-hmm. You know, me and Matt have the same birthday, so you mm. know, mm. Um, me and Riz still talk two right. three times a week. Me right. and Ray talk. Twice a month. Mm-hmm. Um, so I see Map give Mike Kaiser um, dust, angel dust. It was the funniest thing in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you said that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> it was the funniest shit in the world. We was out in Vegas, and you know, this is the time where Mike Kaiser was still like fronting like he smokes weed yeah. and shit like that. And Map said, Yo, Nori, don't smoke that blunt. <laughs> I said, What? <laughs> He said, everything else, don't smoke this one. So I said, you know what? I ain't smoking none of y'all shit. I stay over there. I was smoke. My own shit. And my guys that came over there, and he hit the blunt. And boy, it was a different thing, man. I just got to let you know, my guys, I got you, baby. <laughs> I'm not going to blow it up, guys. my brother. He my brother. I got you. But do you, you ever realize that, um, what is it called? A uh, fraternity. Like, you know, in college, you know, you guys go to, you know, they do all this yeah. shit. But, but this is, years later, that's where a fraternity is. Right. Like years later, they come and they see each other and, and they look out for each other. I feel like hip hop is finally at the stage of becoming a, a fraternity. Like if I was ever walking a hotel and I was to see Salt and Pepper, my first thing is let me make sure they're okay. Right, right. As opposed to like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm it's automatically protective. Do you, do you feel like hip hop is becoming this fraternity? I think it's been for a minute. I think it's been okay. Okay, that's great. Okay. Even even with the divisions of the generations, it seems like like one thing is. So, for example, what? Why did you feel that right now was the time to do this concert? Like, mm-hmm. was there a reason for it, or it just came you together know, that way? I saw Puff do his show, mm-hmm. which we were at. The, we were in the one in Vegas, right? Yeah, I did. So I turned into a tour too. Yeah, right. So. I, I went to the show in L.A., mm. and it blew my mind away. Like, literally just blew my mind away. Mm. I'm coming off a heart attack, like, and I'm watching this. And I remember texting him the next morning and saying, I saw Michael Jackson perform at the Apollo the first time ever. All right. We got to get back to this. Right? <laughs> so saw, saw James Brown, right? And, and I said, Puff, I've never seen a show like this in my life. And I said, I wonder if I could do it. And this was three years ago. Mm. Yeah. So I had a heart attack, you know, so I'm just God bless. getting, you know, better. And then, you know, I started working with Ye. So, you mm. know, that, that took some time. And then the opportunity of this just came. Mm. So it's like a legacy show for you. This I is, mean, that's what I think the, that, the Bad Boy one was a legacy thing. Maybe. I, I, I mean, this is, more, this is more like when you said... It's like I never took the time to smell the roses. Right. Yeah, I believe. I agree, I agree with you. Right. So I think I this agree. one, I'm patting myself on the back and saying, right. "Hey, right. look what it was." Right. But it was, right. but it was Puff's show that really jump started. That inspired you. Yeah. But I, 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 I think, I think this is definitely a tour. I think that um, we've interviewed everybody from like uh, uh, Dead Prez to uh, Havoc to Pete Rock. Pete Rock. Um, Obviously Wu Tang, mm-hmm. and um, everyone always salutes you as the, the you know the OG, the guy that you know the, the CEO that was for the artist. You know what I mean? So I feel like I feel like everyone will come together and just be like, "Yo, man, let's get like you know." I don't want to say like like, like the last hoorah, but like you remember how <laughs> Dwayne Wade he did the last, yeah, the you last know what I mean, dance. and the last dance. Like I feel like this is for, for loud, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like for loud, I think everyone will come together. You know, you know, we really fought for our artists. You mean I got arrested? for throwing a chair through a, a glass door. Um, it happens. <laughs> <laughs> for fighting for Wu-Tang, for mm. getting the money that I felt they deserved. And for I, a video? I'm not not to... for a video. Okay. It was the renegotiation. It was for Raekwon's solo record Ooh. for Cuban Links, and it was um, for the Wu-Tang Forever album. So with RCA? And RCA, we were $25,000 apart. I said, right. just give them the fucking money. Right, right. 
and the business fast was a woman. And she said, Stephen Rifkin, I'm, I'm tired of your shit. I've never right. hit a woman in my life. Right. But I took this chair, right. and if I was facing this way, uh-huh. with 36 floors, and it's going on Broadway, and I turned it around, and I threw it through the glass door. 36 floors? Oh, you're taking this 36 chamber shit. Way too far. So, you know, mm. the cops came, security came, mm. they cuffed me. Yeah. And, mm. um, wow. No, that's great. That, 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 that's great. That's great. And, um, and what do you feel about like the Me Too movement? Like, cause like you know they got Russell like in Tahiti somewhere right now. Like, mean, they got him in Tahiti. <laughs> I mean, what you want I mean, me to say? In, he got himself. He's in Tahiti. Yeah, that's my man. Yeah. But like, I, like, what do you feel about that? Like, I, like, I don't. I personally seen Russell be loose, but I've never seen him like in no rape I mean, shit. Come on, bro. I, like, let's just be clear. Him raping somebody, I don't see. I don't that. see that. I don't shit, see bro. that. Come on, man. Um. I mean, Russell's like a brother to me, right? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I wasn't around when, you know, people are pressing charge on from 35 years ago. Like, who the fuck even remembers 35 years ago? That's crazy. Yeah. So it was like, you know, he was always, like, even when he was, when we had the Jimmy Spice record on my dad's life, right. I mean, right. he, he was crazy, but he was always polite and just right. like, you know, like Bill Cosby, I seen some shit with Bill. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I ain't come on. Like Russell was just you know, Russell wasn't drugging him. Yeah, I, no, uh, Russell wasn't yeah. drugging nobody. No. Like, oh, I don't see that. Like, but Bill was slipping pills and shit. Like, he yeah. he got a little. <laughs> he got a little. <laughs> Bill was a, I ain't gonna front. Bill was a foul nigga. I, just, I, I tell, I tell. All right, I'm just leave that alone. But so, but you have the day that Gabriel Union. No, it wasn't Gabriel. No, because you make some rumors. It wasn't Gabby or you. I know somebody in Lincoln. I was, I was, like, I'm going there. Yeah, no. I thought it was both. No, no, Gabby's no? just she's but like she's a sister. Friend. She, oh, yeah, okay. she introduced me to Sana. Oh, right. she introduced Sana. There, yeah. there, 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 there you go. Uh, Young Sana, late. That's art. <laughs> <laughs> she's a beautiful girl. How how does that happen? <clears throat> I mean. How did it happen? I mean, it just... You was pre, this was pre-TMZ like TMZ days, too. If you would have been eating you up in the TMZ days. No, they killed me. They killed you? Yeah, they killed Sanat. It was like, because I just got out of my marriage, and it was like, they called her a homewrecker and shit like oh, that, and it was fuck. just like... Get out of here. Yeah? She wasn't a homewrecker. Let's just clear that up. You gotta say, the way you said it, you gotta say it with more basic. She, she wasn't a homework. Okay. <laughs> yes, please. All right, cool. So, big up. Y'all cool? Y'all still cool? Oh, me and Sonata? Yeah. Mm. Very cool. Ooh. She's cool with my ex wife. Oh, yeah? And at one point, you left your wife and you um, took you took us down puffs like a, a maid or some shit like that, right? What did you say? Puffs maid? What are you doing? I'm not even reading some shit like this. We went from classic era. Man, listen, man, Steven lived a life, man. And the same way I get rappers here, and I no, get no, them, he's being fair. Being fair, like you know, I listen, listen. As a married man, I admire when people were single. Their days of being single and having fun, because <laughs> okay, don't worry. About it. <laughs> but you know, that's good. I mean, the issue was, you know, uh-huh. I fucked up. You know, oh shit, I didn't expect that. Go ahead. <laughs> you know, when I was single, I didn't have money, mm. so. You know, when these records started coming, the checks started coming <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Shit changed. CEO checks is different. Talk, talk, let's talk about some checks. Yeah. Sony checks? It started with the BMG checks. BMG. I just look at it. <laughs> 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 I just felt rich. <laughs> <laughs> BMG was the first. Woo! Because now, now they, they, they believe you, right? Cause like, now they didn't have a choice. They didn't have a fucking a choice. choice. I mean, now we just put them in the head. I mean, it was just like... Right. They knew when I threw the chair, they knew mm. I wasn't playing. Yeah, but, but at one point, I remember Fat Joe, I said, like, yo, man, I'm going on a um, pl- uh, private jet with Steve Rifkin. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, Recently like, or back no, then? No, I mean, back then. Like, right. I remember at one point, you was taking private jets. Yeah, so Quincy mm. Jones turned me on to the private planes. I love how he named it. Stunning, man. Yo, his name drop game is so <laughs> nice. You know Quincy Jones. <laughs> oh, nigga, that's Quincy Jones. I'm I'm open, I'm open, I'm open. I'm open, I'm open. So, you know, through the marketing company, I was consulting Quincy's label. Quest. Okay, I, in my mind, you 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 speaking to Quincy Jones. Y'all was drinking a glass of wine, and he said, what are you doing on commercial? No, nah, this, 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 nah, this, <laughs> this is how it's all. I was imagining that I could. Me and my fiance mm. are talking about our wedding day. Okay. And um, also in the house phone rings. And it's Quincy. 
And I remember this like it was yesterday. Mm-hmm. He goes, hey, Steve, it's Q. I'm like, who? He goes, Q. Mm-hmm. And I got a, in, not an email, Brett Ratner called me who made the introduction. He goes, Quincy's going to be calling you. Okay. Man, name dropping. Right. right? <laughs> so um, Brett goes, Quincy's going to be calling you. Just, he wants to talk to you. Help him consult his life. Mm-hmm. So he calls me and um, he goes, what are you doing tomorrow night? I'm like, I don't know. He goes, have dinner with me. He goes, we're going to this place called Dre's. The finest women are in finest women in LA will be there. Okay. I thought Dre's was in Vegas, but this, this is out of my league. Yeah, this okay, is okay, for, okay. was on last year. I, I got to relax. Let me just listen. Okay. So um I go meet Quincy and it's like love at first sight. Mm. Like the the woman, mm. it's me and Quincy and like ten women. Mm. I mean, one more beautiful than the other. Mm. And he goes, I want to bring you in a, as a consultant. He goes, What are you doing? Next Monday. Mm. No, next Tuesday. Mm. And I said, no. He goes, come to Chicago with me. I'm doing Oprah, and I'm showcasing my new brand new artist, Tamia. New brand of water? No, br- new artist. Okay. Uh, Tamia. Okay. His brand new artist. Okay. So um, I end up in Chicago with Quincy. Mm-hmm. Y'all flew together? Yeah, on his plane. On to, his plane? To okay. Chicago. And I was like, this is you said no more uh, that's the way to no do more it. American airlines <laughs> <laughs> I mean see you later United <laughs> so, Delta goodbye so okay. for two years uh-huh. whenever, wherever Quincy went I went and it was just well so he taught me how to play with money wow and that's where you private plane yeah so I was like <laughs> well like I think when the Sony check came then I was like fuck you all this is this is that was Fat Joe's question. Fat Joe said, um, let me just pull up Fat Joe's <laughs> question. So, you know, when I, that's when I do interviews. He says, how much dough did he blow? And then he said, <laughs> <laughs> how big of a deal did he do with Sony? Because that must have been your, that must have been your fuck you moment. That was a real fuck you moment. Fuck you moment? Yeah. Let's make some noise for the fuck you. <laughs> I could imagine. Thank you, Tommy Matola. Yeah, thank you, Tommy Matola. We're going to get him on Drink Champs, too. So this is this is after Wu-Tang works. This is after everybody works. Everybody works. Now you have a choice to go anywhere in the world. But Because isn't RCA, um, wasn't that merged into the same Sony Not system? Yet. Not yet. Not okay. yet. Okay. All right. So break, so break it down. Um, so Jimmy Ivey. Was my mentor, and he's at Innescope. 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 Yeah. Okay. So, and he's paying me a shitload of money to consult. To consult. Jesus, at least you get money for everywhere, Steve. I'm so, okay. all Jimmy kept on saying to me is, "Fuck the bottom line, and just think about the top line." Mm. Right. So, Quincy told me about planes. Mm. Jimmy told me about the chef and the driver. Jesus. They teach you how to live life. <laughs> right? I don't have none of these type of friends. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> do you get a friend? Uh, me and you got to make develop more shit like this. Like, I'm sorry, man. You got way better friends than me and your friend. I'm sorry. You niggas need to set me a game up. I'm just saying, good, good, good. So, um, mm-hmm. I have a meeting with Strauss Elnick and Pete Jones. Strauss Elnick was the CEO of BMG and Pete Jones was set up distribution. Mm. And they said, you know, we need more profits from you. And I said, I'm not giving you more profits. I'm, I'm building these fucking artists. Right. Fuck, fuck you. Like, whatever right. happens, happens. Right. And um, the next day, my other calls, you know, right. they're willing to let you go. Uh, who's, what, who's saying they're willing to let you go? My attorney called me and said they're willing to let you go. That's all I see. Uh, loud. Loud. Wow. So... It's Clive Davis's pre-Grammy party. Mm. I walk in there, mm. and it was like the Red Sea opened up. Like they, they opened every up. like everybody just came at me. You know, Tommy, Doug, this one, that one, and I didn't say a fucking word yet because I didn't even know. Like, I because you you going too crazy for our, for our listeners. When you say Tommy, you gotta say Tommy Matola. Tommy Matola. You, you yeah. say Doug, you gotta say Doug, Doug Morris. Morris. Yeah, you okay. know what I'm saying? Cause they're just thinking like it's Doug from down the block. And like, they don't know, <laughs> and, you know and what I'm saying? Yeah, Sony, yeah. So, right? to, and, Tommy and Sony, is, Doug, is Doug is the universal. Doug just came to the universal. Yeah. Um, so, every CEO of every music group 
uh-huh. is calling mm. and they're kissing my ass mm. during the whole fucking night. Mm. Right? I didn't even have a chance to tell my wife it. Mm-hmm. So she goes, what the fuck is going on? I'm mm. like, I said, I'll tell you when I get home. So I picked Tom. I told her. Right. Um, because what they... What Based t- on the meetings or... No, so... Because you took everyone's meeting. No, I, no. I, I took everybody's meeting, okay, 100%. Cool. Um, I, my first choice was really Jimmy and Doug, but right. I don't know. Something was up. Right. Whatever. I think Jimmy was maybe redoing his deal or whatever, mm-hmm. and I was like, nah. And mm-hmm. um, Master P was really blowing up at that time. Wow. Priority. Yeah, right. I mean, he right. was just blowing up. I mean, everything that he put out, right. I mean, mm-hmm. was going platinum. I was like, what? Like, mm-hmm. how the fuck is he doing? I mean, I know how he's doing it, but I wanted to see it with my own eyes. So right. I went on a tour bus for six weeks. With Master P? No, by myself. Oh, wow. And I, and I just did the South and just right. trying to get what the... Oh, Master you trying to get a feel of, like, what the fuck is really going on? The vibe of South, right. So 3-6 Mafia was signed to Relativity. Wow. And, and, every, and everybody, everywhere that I went to... Was Alan Grumlock involved in that deal? What, what, um, I'm, I'm sure he was. And, okay. and he was on Relativity too, right? In the beginning, yeah. Right. yeah okay. So I was, um, but every, everywhere I went, everybody started talking about the next thing to pop is 3-6 Mafia. Wow. So when me and Tommy had the meeting, he goes, who do you want to be at Columbia Epic? I said, I want Relativity. Wow. And he looked at me like I was on crack. And you wanted to acquire Relativity? We, so, so we didn't acquire it, but we merged. It was the right. first time done in the music business where oh, you, you being up. with Sony to do that move. I had Lab, right? right? So we uh-huh. bought BMG out. So now I own 100% of Lab. Right. Okay. I merge Lab into Relativity. So now we're the third major mm. inside So that's Sony how you system. adjust it all. Okay. Now I mm. And I did it really because of 365. Mm. And you were one of the first labels to... Besides, obviously, Priority and Master P, to, to see that future in the South. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, P was the first one. No, right? he was yeah. the first one, yeah. God bless him. Oh, holy moly guacamole. This is history right here, yeah. man. This is history. So, he merged. He merged. Uh-huh. And then we had one amazing year, and yeah. then it just became too corporate for me. Yeah. Why? Yeah, it was like quarterly numbers, this numbers, that numbers. And I was miserable. Wow, wow. So what, that's that's when. You, so basically, um, all right. So you're saying you sold the company, basically? Yeah, I sold the company, and I had uh-huh. not worked for the company that I sold. And so, like, so Russell, like, for instance, Russell, I think uh, Russell had to do that with DevCan. Well, Russell's. I mean, not Russell, Leo stayed. Leo right. became the CEO of right. Island Def Jam. Right. Right. So and you hated it. You hated. It. Yeah. <laughs> to see your face I try to convince them to be like no don't say that and he's nah, like nah. so I remember going to Hawaii mm-hmm. with my son and my wife mm-hmm. and I said I think I'm going to send Tommy Matola back his money oh shit and I'm just going to leave right, right. and um, I'm out playing ball right. and I see these big two Samoans coming running right. to the courts Booyah your tribe is there <laughs> <laughs> And nobody knew where I was, right, except right. for my mother. Right. Um, and I'm like, something, somebody died. Right. And they said, you have an emergency on the mainland. Right. So I call my office, and they just send me straight to Rich. Right. I just said. Yeah. Uh-huh. And um, Rich said, Pun had a heart attack. Or he's not dead yet. So I called Joe, and just as I called Joe, he just passed. And in my mind, I was retiring. I think I was going to move to Hawaii. Right. And um, I just got back from Hawaii, to tell you the truth. That's yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. That's why this yeah. story is fucking me up in a different way. But I'll I continue. So I, um, I'm like, who knows? And Joe says, nobody. I said, I'm going to call Angie. You know, she was part of Terror Squad in a, in a, in a crazy Martinez. Way. Angie Martinez. Yeah, she still is. Yeah. Um, I called Angie. I told her. And I just, like, the letter that I wrote Tommy, I ripped up, jumped on a plane, dropped everybody off in L.A., and I went, you know, straight to New York. Mm-hmm. But um, I didn't retire. But right. I had, so I stayed there another two, three years. But, and I and you know, speaking of that, you know, Palm was like 
my closest yeah. friend was one of my best friends. Um, I mean, you guys had that amazing record together. Yeah, we had, yeah, that f- video. Fifteen, I mean, yeah, but that, that you came up video. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, James Bond. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I tell you something. Thank you for checking. Cause I was about to go. Thank you, thank you, Steve. You know, I was about to go like you know, depressing. And, yeah, depressing. <laughs> and he just man, let me tell you something about that video. The reason why you guys had a two-hour overage on the video is because you remember the guy jumps from the the, the, the thing. You know, Pun really wanted to do that. So the whole time, Pun is like, <laughs> Pun is like, I don't need no stunt man. And he's got me over there. He's like, you're right, Nori, and I'm like, oh fuck. You know, you don't want to say right because I know my friend is overweight. You can't jump over no fucking building. You know what I'm talking about on the building? He jumps over. So they so they have a stunt man there to do it, and the stunt man is like. A hundred pounds, like, in, and Pun is like, he's not gonna look like me. I'm gonna do it, and he kept trying to say, "Yo, Nori, tell him this, that I can do it." And I'm like, "There's no way you're gonna get me those kind of things. But that's the fun. That was the craziest, funny part. So if you ever remember, you had guys that had like two hours over it. It was because I was sitting there like, "Nah, man, I can't, I can't allow you to do it, Pun." But Pun was. Pun really, you know, the beautiful thing about Pun is Pun, Pun loved being a celebrity. He loves being a celebrity. And he never felt big. No. Like, like, he moved like he was lighter than everyone in this place. Like, I kid you not. But get, so, I'll tell you a, a, mm-hmm. a great story. Like, please. Still not a play. He's blowing, blowing up. Ooh. He comes back from, you know, doing a show. He buys himself the most beautiful Cuban link mm-hmm. bracelet mm-hmm. that said Big Punisher. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, show money really must be made. I said, this bracelet's beautiful. Right, he goes. If, he goes. If we go platinum, I'm going to get you one. I go pun. We're shipping platinum. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> right? He goes two million. I'm like, nah, we'll be at two million in a week. Right. Right? right, and I'm not thinking anything. So it's like, if we do four million, you know, right. you can right. get me something. And I'm right. fucking around, not even thinking. All right. Cut to a year and a half later, we hit the four million mark. Wow. God damn. Is that you know whatever it is, and um. A guy by the name of Gerard Hunt, who was our product manager, okay, walks into my office. He goes, "Pun wants to see you today mm-hmm. to discuss the next album." Mm-hmm. So I'm like, "All right." So I called Joe. I'm like, "Hey, is it cool? Pun wants to come in." Right. He goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, yeah." Comes in, and I'm fucking around with him. I'm like, "You know what? You gave me your word. You were going to buy me a fucking Cuba Link bracelet." Right. You know, when we went for a million, we're at four point three. Right. And you don't have shit. I mean, I gave you my word. Mm-hmm. Re- reaches out his pocket, he goes, fuck you, motherfucker. <laughs> and he throws this box, yeah. you know, all, all wrapped up yeah. with the most beautiful, yeah. I have it framed, yeah. like in a, in, a, in a box, with my name on it, all diamonds. Wow. Damn. Wow. God damn. Make some noise for people. <laughs> so, um, you know, not to like, you know, be all like, you know, but from Pun, you have to speak about Prodigy. Like, where where was you at when you I, got that news? I was here. My daughter was um, Miami. You say here? I was in Florida. I was in Florida. Right? Yeah, yeah. Florida, yeah. Yeah. So, Florida, yeah. yeah. My daughter was taking her road test. Oh wow! God bless. And Rich Isaacson kept on calling me, and I'm like, all right, something. I mean, he's calling me like four times in a row. So it's either good news or bad news, right. and I don't want to hear anything right. Right. until. Right. I see her. And um, he texts me, call me now, urgent. Rich. Rich. Okay. So I see my daughter coming in from taking her road test. And did, then, she, did she pass? Cause she must well, be I, I, I'm like, now I'm on the phone with Rich. He goes, are you yeah. sitting down? I'm like, oh, fuck, what you're saying, Gee, right? But. And I go, I'm not sitting down. I go, what's the matter? He goes, she died. And she's walking in. And I can't tell if she passed or not passed. Right. But I'm hysterical crying now. Right. And um, she passed. I couldn't really enjoy that right. with I her. Right. That moment. But it was just, right. that was a hard one for me. Now I gotta rewind a little more. Apologies, but we're all on the subject. Now your first group, your first sons, you like, you know, your first, like, you know, child. There was some Wu Tang Clan, you know. You got Capadonna that went away or whatever. But the passing of ODB he comes home. He he, he wasn't quite like Wu Tang Clan when he came home. He's quite like like I, you could tell he was in like a confused state. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say because I don't want to say he was Rockefeller or, or any of that. I just want to say that you know he, he just came home. Yeah. He wanted to be in his cell. 
but then he that he passes away. That has has to be the so. This, I'm flying. I'm flying to New York, uh-huh. and um, I land the second I put on my phone from the plane. The way I don't have loud at the time anymore. Now I have right. SRC records, mm. right? And Akon is blowing the fuck up at this David time. David Banner's on his yeah, yeah. yeah. It's locked up. Yeah. Mm. So, Divine calls me. And said, Dirty just passed 20 minutes ago. I'm like, where are you? He says, the studio. So, I just went straight wow. to the studio. His body was still there when I got there. Damn. Wow. Like, you know, um, for people like who CEOs, for people who rappers, for people who are just human beings, like, because you, 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 was a, you attached to this. Is not like you, you're not, you're not one of those I'm CEOs. Not, I'm not Tommy Matola. I'm not Doug Mars. I mean, well, you know, you know, I, I, you know, without saying that, let me because you know, our, sometimes our audience might not understand that. What I'm saying is, you're a human. Like, like you're a person that's involved. Like you're not, you're not looking at a person like there's numbers. So dealing with that, like, how, how do you cope every day? Like, like you know what I mean? Because I, I, I can imagine your artist was your friends as well. I mean, all of it really right. just, right. just. I mean, it takes right. a piece out of you. Right. Yeah. Right. And then you know, um, you know, dealing with the pun that stayed, and you know, you know, you know, Fat Joe's one of my best mm-hmm. friends, and. You know, like how did that just feel? Like you know what I'm saying? Like seeing well, those good. Pun was signed to Joe, right? So I never, me and Pun had a relationship, mm. but all business stuff, mm. I dealt with Joe and the attorneys, mm-hmm. right? So you know, and the thing is, Joe gets a bad rap, you know, right. for what people say, you know, what right. you do with Pun, right. but it's really not true, right? That's real shit. So, I mean, he treated Pun like a brother and made sure Pun got everything that he deserved. Yeah, I know that. I know that. But when I I say it, it makes me feel like, just because, you know, Joe's my brother. Yeah, like I'm biased. So that's why he ain't, I mean, that was him. (laughs) Like, you know, he said that, you know what I mean? But Steve, man, I just want to, um, I just want to reiterate, you know, how great you are, man. I appreciate that. Um, uh, I know you for years and whenever I had one of your artists on the record or, or whenever um, your artists, I've seen it, see you out and dinner. It's just Steve always eats the greatest places in the world. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and whenever I see you, and you always kept your word, and I, I just want to salute you for that. You know what I'm saying? I want to salute you for that. When you was the hottest, when you was like, you know, coming up in the game to the, the biggest in the game to still like just maintain the, your, 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 your bigness, you always has been a person of your word. So now, what is we we got the concert? What is next? And we understand you're managing DMX. As first of all, how is DMX? He's good. He's good. He's good. Is he? Is he okay? And he's on Def Jam, right? He's on Def Jam. That's a beautiful thing. Let's make sure DMX. <laughs> you know what, Def Jam? Um, I hear other podcasts critique you, and I hear other podcasts like you know actually diss you. And I'm gonna just tell you something, Def Jam. I disagree with those podcasts in totality. The fact that you guys got LL Cool J, yeah, no, nah, says a lot, and DMX yeah. back on your roster to me, that's kind of like dope. Like that's like loud starting again with Wu Tang Clan. And I would love that. Like, Paul's at the realm. At the, so pa- right? so Paul at the helm is at the realm, and Rich is number two. Yeah. Rich Isaacson. Right? Oh wow, yeah. Paul Rosemary. Okay, yeah. right. So pick him up, even though I heard he's not fans of us. It's okay. Really? <laughs> it's okay. Really? No, not in a bad way. Uh, Not in a bad way. He just, you know, he just don't want him to come on here because we smoke and get high. Look, Steve didn't smoke and get high. And we having a great fucking interview. And this is a great example. I just got like, okay, he did not hate on us. I just heard he just, you know, did block us. Okay. I mean, but Paul's a real hip hop head. Paul's he a is, real yeah. yeah. He I was mean, a lawyer and for a lot of underground. Yeah. Guys back in the day, Scam, the guy with our logo. Listen, I he was his lawyer. respect Paul. I respect Paul you know, to the fullest. And, and then Rich. You know, the pedigree, you know, it's like we both learned from my dad, mm. right? So, you know, even though, you know, he has I a reputation. I always thought Rich was John, Jonathan. Did you know the crazy shit? And I always thought Jonathan was Rich. I mean, I that's funny. It's the crazy shit. I was like, oh, so, shit, I know Rich. So, so we all grew up around the corner from each other. 
This is Manhattan. No, this is Long Island. Long Island. What part of Long Island y'all from? America. Listen, Merrick people, if y'all are American, y'all broke, y'all <laughs> fucking up. Listen, <laughs> <laughs> nah, so yeah, so okay. Mm-hmm. So it's like we always had, you know, the dream. Like, all right, well, all eventually, you know, Rich was a lawyer by trade. Went to law school. Went to Ivy League school. Uh, Jonathan went to the University of Maryland, and it was always our dream to just right. always work together. Mm. Like Rockefeller, like like all these these great record labels. You are you a fan of these new record labels? I'm a fan of my son's new label. Oh, what is that? What is it? Uh, my son has a deal through Atlantic. Get called, out of here. Called Chosen. Chosen? Why are you making no noise yeah. through that? Yeah. 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 And and and, and what's, um, what's he, his name? His name is Alex. Alex yeah. Rifkin. Alex Rifkin. That's dope. Wow. Um, so and how he's doing it. He's taking a mixture of what's going on today, you mm. know, digitally, mm. and then um, my blueprint on how I did it. He just signed old D. Bastis. Old D. Bastis, Bastis son. He just signed this kid out of Detroit. Okay. Which reminds me of an MOP, you know, like right. he's on the road now. So it's like he's doing that, but then he'll like have mm. conversations with SoundCloud. Right, right. That's crazy. Crazy. Have conversations with Spotify, but he he's on the road. Like he's living on the road the way I was living on the road. Wow. So the, the did he give him that advice, or he did it alone? No. So he's a ball player. He played college ball. He played okay. D one ball. Everything. Right. So he's take he took that work ethic. That's hard. He took that work ethic, work ethic, and and put it. You know, like with somebody on his team who was like a producer. He goes, "Yo, this kid has incredible beats. This, that, whatever, right?" And so sorry, Steve. No, I ain't gonna front the smoke. Is no, the, it's, I ain't gonna front, no it's okay. It's I mean, not me. Like it's, no, it was like it's not him. It's the smoke. Yeah, no, I'm the I'm smoke. Just, he had his own mind. I just yeah. realized yeah. I'm in the smoke. It's a smoke, smoke monster from from, uh, yeah. from Lost. Okay, <laughs> so um, he um, you know, so I'm really like he took his basketball work ethic or his sports work ethic, and and just like, unreal. Like he, you know. When we announced the show, he was like, hey, Dad, it would be nice if um, his new artist, who was actually bubbling, not the kid out of Detroit, but this other kid out of yeah. Seattle, yeah. can he open it? Can he be the first one to open up the yeah. show? I'm like, yeah, of course. You yeah. know? So, um, New York and Radio City Music Hall. Yeah. It's a great fucking opportunity. So, but I'm really proud of what he's doing. And then, you know, my youngest son is a rapper. Ball oh, player. Shit. So he, he made a record... Um, He's gonna kill me when he sees this, but it's like the kid can really fucking spit. Oh, because why they don't they don't want to? No, he's still in high school. Like you know, his team is like top five in the country. No, Uh, Bronny's on his team. Z Wade's on it. You know, so it's like. Because you ever heard of the rapper Russ? We had a rap. Yeah, the rapper Russ. Yeah, and rapper Russ got on here, and he he was because people his father was in the industry, so they called Mm -hmm. him an industry plant. And he hated that. You know what yeah. I mean? He hated that. So you think your kids would think that? That's the no, my, no, my kids don't want nothing to do with it. Like, they're, they're doing it all. Like, oh, I, had, own. Like, I had no idea. Me. Like, when right. Ryan did this record, and he did it with three of his friends, right. Alex calls me because you hear the record. I'm like, what record? <laughs> he goes, Ryan did a record last night. He goes, it's fire. Mm. S- s- sends me the record, and I was like, holy shit. Like, this kid, I'm like, he really, I, I, I call him like, Ryan, who wrote this? He goes, I did. Mm. So it's like, all right, you know. Speak Jonathan to him, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get, let's get a seat for Jonathan. Yeah, uh, huh? let's call Mr. Lee seat. <laughs> the G-Wagon, what about it? No, that's, the, that's just so, that's the G-Wagon. Yeah. All right. Well, that's my older son. Come on, do you need a mic? Let's get more mic. Yeah, Jonathan. Maybe, you know, he's a little, little, little shot. Where's Randy? Randy left? No, he's... Sure. Sure. All right, we ready? We back, motherfucking drink champs. Listen, so listen. So listen, we just brung in. Oh god, damn, I love Boris sometimes. Sometimes Boris is a great Sometimes drink. you love yeah. Boris? No, no, no. Yeah, I love him most of the time. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, we got motherfucking Randy Acker here. Uh, we got motherfucking Jonathan Rifkin here, and we got motherfucking Steve Rifkin here. These are the behind the scenes of the behind the scenes. So this is just I would like to call the people. This is pure game right now. You understand? Pure game. Do you remember? How Lyle's run, and where were you out there when Lyle was just destroying shit? Or was you the opposite side? I don't know if I was the opposite side. I feel like I was a. a <laughs> we were neighbors. A, a, mm. Yeah, bef- before I was even in hip hop, I lived across the hall from Steve on Fifty Fifth Street when I was Jeez working at SBK Records with uh, 
SPK Vanilla Ice Ice and Wilson Phillips and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Definitely before Diggable Planets. Marcus Moore. Diggable Planets. Diggable Diggable Planets. Yes. Whoa. Wild Pitch, Pendulum Records. Wild Wild Pitch was doing a lot. I lived across the hall from Steve. That's where I met him. Main source of Wild Pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez Louise, Papa G's. So how, uh, y'all said, y'all, y- y'all didn't know that y'all was both in the music industry? No, we, we knew. We uh, did, but, but I uh, really wasn't in his part of the business then. I was at EMI, I was in business affairs, I wasn't mm-hmm. in hip hop. Not till I got psh, into Def Jam that so you was on the I had an appreciation for what he really had done. Right, so you, you was on the lawyer side at the time we had lived with each other. Yes. <laughs> okay, and you were? Wow. Wow. Yeah. And you knew he was he, popping. Yeah, he oh. was he was the guy. I knew that. I just wasn't in it. I knew so, who he was for oh. sure. So John, when was the first time you met Chris Lighty? First time I met Chris Lighty. Wow. Um, it had to be at seven forty one Broadway. Eight forty one Broadway. Um, that's not, that's our, not our first okay. our first office. Um, in New York. In New York, and um, I think I met him with, with I want to say Peter Thomas. Mm. They were wow. both. How can I be down? Well, Def Jam. He's out here right now. So how can I be down? Down? I think they were both. Uh, they were both. In some way, shape, or form, they were both uh, working with Def Jam. Mm. Yeah, Peter. And was they were, Def and they were, uh, they were up at the office. I don't know if they were together, but they were. They, I mean, they were friends, and and Chris was a. As you know, a great friend of mine. Yeah. Right, well, I was going to ask you the same question too. The first time you met Chris Lady, and then I would just see Chris everywhere. Um, Shaquem introduced me to Chris. Flavor unit. Flavor yeah. unit. Where at? You don't remember? Yeah, um, my office uh, in LA. Wow. Uh, in LA. Mm. And then um, we just developed. A relationship. Did, he, was he the one who brung you Mark Deep? No. Nah. Wow. So he he wasn't managing Mark Deep when nah, you a woman by the name of Tammy, I forget her last name, brought me Mark Deep. Wow. Had you even heard that first album they did? That premiere was the executive producer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 from the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and probably hallways. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I heard that in Spoffy. That's a whole other story. When did you first meet Chris Lighty? I met Chris Lighty at 160 Barrack Street. 160 Barrack Street. Yeah. Okay. That is uh, Def Jam, the first Def Jam. <laughs> Chunk King is across the street, and the next is the very next building. Across the street. But that's probably like the the, the, the illest, like, at that point. I the mean, era? That era. It was, like, it was bananas. Yeah, because like really, Russ, the whole Russell thing. Simmons like, had managed everybody, because Russ management was in there as well. Russ right. management was in there. Russ, 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 a, and at that yeah. point, Violator had their label deal there. Right. So Chris was in the back that's past the A&R doing. department. Right. But the whole building was just out of control. I mean, right. the, when I really, really, I had met Chris, but right. he had gotten into a, an altercation with one of the artists. Yeah. He DMX. was mistaken for being the artist's brother. Yeah, DMX. DMX. Um, and then it was yeah, that was the first like, day you met Chris? It was for DMX. That was like, not the first day I met him, but uh, it had started to develop a relationship after that. Right. Like, we had talked, we didn't know each other, but... Um, you know, because I had ended up working with X, mm. uh, yeah. which was very strange because mm. I was a lawyer at Def Jam. And then mm. somehow, I don't know, I guess when you're in a small company and it's exploding, it's all, you know, everybody does whatever needs to happen. Exactly. Right. At that point, Irv had to kind of, you know, go be with Ja a little more and right. there was no one really be with X. And they were like, oh, Acker, you know the Rough Riders? <laughs> and I had no idea. <laughs> just go ahead. <laughs> but I just went. I just went. But Chris was like he 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 was very mentoring. Like he always was like very warm and welcoming and opening and wanted to share game with me right. and with other people, not just me. I mean, I just found him to be like that. I right, so the, so so before we get crazy, um, I still don't believe Chris killed himself. I just need your your opinion. What do you think? I mean, I know how much he loves his kids, right? Yes. So, I mean, we all have kids, and I just, no matter how down, uh, yeah. you know, I could be, I mean, I would, I mean, his kids were his life, so. So, basically, you're saying you would me. You don't yeah. believe me, you know, so. You think it's a conspiracy theory somewhere. 
Uh, I spoke to him that day. What? The yeah. day that he supposedly killed himself? Yeah. Okay. Wow. And what? And, and you, it was, um, I needed 50 for something. 50 cent? Yeah. Okay, I think, all right. So, um, these boxing promoters wanted to have a um, Floyd member of the fight in Dubai. And it would have been the biggest fight in the history of fights. Okay. And um, I needed 50 to get to Floyd. Wow. Okay. And you spoke to Chris that day. Yeah. All right. Now, th I have never heard this story. This is me. This, this is not even for me. This is me personally. Did he sound like he was going to kill himself? No. Or he sound like he was mad that day? No, I mean... I've never know. heard this story, Steve, so this is... No, this is I mean, you know that. we had our laugh. He goes, is there money to be made? I'm like, Chris, we'll make more money on this one shot than we'll ever make in our life. <laughs> wow. Because... I just want you know the people to know that I've been saying this, this you know I've been doing this for four years. Yeah, consistently you've been saying it. And I've always said that I've never, I've never believed that. And you know I'm glad that you know you didn't even know that, and you you you're giving your side of the story, and that's fucking awesome for me, man. You know what I mean? Um, but 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 in that note, we talked about big pun. We talked about prodigy. <clears throat> we talked about. Um, weren't you gonna say something about Jay Z? But I'm coming back to that. But I just wanted. To, for our fallen soldiers, for Edward. everyone that we just talked from, everybody from Loud to everyone, we're gonna take a shot for them, man. Salute, 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 salute. And this is how do we, how do we no more we pronounce this? Boom boom. So, Colombian firewater. I got two great Chris stories. So you met, okay, okay, you want to go to Chris story? Because I got some Kanye shit I want to hit you with. Because you managed <laughs> Kanye? Kanye? No, I didn't, yeah. I didn't manage Kanye. You was around him during the Make America Hat Great. I ran his <laughs> label. <laughs> was it something with merch? No, it was no I, I ran his label. Oh, the label. Oh, oh, that's right. But it was awkward because I know you. <laughs> it was awkward. You are not a Make America Great. I'm going to Make America guy. Great, but in my way. Right. Not, yes, yes, not, yes. Not so, MAGA, exactly. I'm going to tell you something about Kanye. Okay. I love him like a son. I love him like a That's brother. That's hard. Um, I want him to distribute my sneakers. The nigga don't be calling me back. I mean, he I got my own sneakers. Yeah. I don't you know. Like, I, I mean, just want you to distribute my shit. He, he, has, a, he has a heart of gold. Yes. And Kanye, when he was wearing that, he doesn't want to be dictated to saying, hey, you got to vote for right. Bob. You got to, you know, so right. it's like, he's his own man. Right. So, yeah. And he wants to make his choice. So mm -hmm. whatever he says sometimes, mm -hmm. it, just, it comes out of his heart. Mm -hmm. Where he doesn't like, all right, let me bring it back and let, and let, let me say it this mm -hmm. way. Right. The guy has passion like there's no tomorrow. Like mm -hmm. when me and him went our own different way, mm -hmm. Like, and it was neutral. He goes, I want to take care of you for two years. Maybe you don't have to do that. Like, a, right. like 48 hours later, you know. <laughs> like a severance package type of thing? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, just, I'm here for you. Just, you know, whatever it is. Right. Um, so when he wore the hat, I don't think he was doing it because he loves Trump so much. Right. Because you remember the first I, picture it was. It was him, him Leo. I took the picture. Lucy and Drain. That's the guy from University, yeah. right? I get, get, oh my god, yeah. So did you know how this picture was gonna go crazy? No, I wasn't even paying attention to the fucking hat, to be honest. <laughs> right, right, okay. Mm -hmm. So um uh -huh. because <laughs> see that <laughs> right. because the shirt that he wore okay. was free Larry Hooper. Uh -huh. Damn. Got me. Nobody saw that. No one that saw that. That's crazy. No, no one saw that, Steve. Wow. That's that, you know, all right, cool. We're going to have to pull that picture up again. <laughs> yeah, we're going to even that out real quick right here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We'll continue. So, <laughs> I mean, I think Kanye does want to make America great again. Right. But his way, mm. which, you know, he wants it to be a free America. Right. He, you know, so it's not like. I'm for Trump. I mean, Trump just had that hat. I, mean, right. he, I think Kanye is like, all right, let's In your own mind. You can speak whatever the fuck you want yeah. without worrying. Like, so, outrage culture shit is going crazy. Like, So that's really what it was. But right. 
the two years that we were together, I mean, they were, I mean, I worked for so you was in, um, what's that shit, Naomi? What's that shit? Wyoming. Yeah. Wyoming? Wyoming? Yeah, Wyoming. Wyoming. Naomi was in Wyoming? <laughs> what, for the, for the album Missing? For the, no, I'm talking about just Barry. Just Just general. I'm not, I'll think, I, I, I'm I'm not, not in so, Wyoming. It's not cool for me. No. <laughs> but I, for, I was you know, not comfortable so, ever in Wyoming. So the first time was, I think, mm. in Jackson, right? Where we had the, the, the um, album... I, I, I like the four seasons. Whatever the four seasons yeah. is, I like that's me, the only part. Me too. I'm okay. Okay. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. Um, uh-huh. And then around three months ago, he called. He goes, "If I send you a plane, it's not to send you. Send you a plane? Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is flash. Yeah. If I send you a plane, can you come see me? I need to talk to you. Okay. He doesn't tell you where. No, to to Kobe, Wyoming. Wyoming. Not where. So, um, send me the plane. We had our lunch. We had our meeting. Mm-hmm. Spent the night, and I flew back the next morning. But mm-hmm. he really is. He's an amazing father. He's amazing. amazing I father. think he's, and he's a genius. Like, there's he's no denying yeah, that he's so, a genius. Like, mean, like, like, let me tell you something. I went on Nick Cannon's show, right? And he asked me about the, the album. The album, and I didn't like the album. I liked it. But liked the, it. you liked it, and you just you just screwed me the whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, it, like. I just said I didn't like the album, so people thought that like I was like being malicious about this kid. I didn't say that at all. I'm just giving your honest opinion, my honest which opinion. is what Kanye's arguing. Oh, yeah. That's his yeah. argument. That's you could have your opinion. You could have an opinion. opinion. I never said I didn't like him or like it was something personal for him. Right. Like Kanye's first daughter, his name, her nickname is Nori. Like, why would I ever like disrespect? But I just gave my honest opinion. Like, I'm honored. Like the first time I met Kim Kardashian, Kim Kardashian. Yeah. Um, Kanye. Kanye grabbed Kim Kardashian and walked to old Walmart to me and said, this is who we named our daughter after, Nori. This is Nori. I, this is real shit. Like, this is on the E! Hollywood channel. They blocked my face out because I didn't sign off. So I was just thrown off. I was like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I didn't know. You know what I mean? So like, like, like yeah, like, they, they, when they hit me with the signature, I was like, dark. I was like, Mark Sean Lynch out this motherfucker. Bro, you know what I'm saying? But what I'm trying to say is, like, I didn't mean it to be malicious when I said that I just disliked the Jesus King because I'm thinking this is a spirit rap album when this kind of was a gospel album. And that's cool. That's cool. If I was taught that and they just took my, that line and just ran with everything, they never. But how many other, other 99 episodes of Drink Champs where I'm saying college dropout, when I'm saying Kanye's a fucking president? You know, the, I, I, I said I'll vote for Kanye for president. They just took, the, they just took that one sound bite. And, and I, I didn't mind because I seen Bu- um, Bu- what's my man's name? For, um, Akon's brother? Boo. Oh, Boo. Oh, oh. So I seen Bu and I was, I was like, Boo, what's up? And he was like, what's up? He said, what's up? I was like, tell Kanye I want him one, one drink chance. And he looked at me like, you know you don't want Kanye. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking like, cause this, is, this is telically us having a conversation. Like, we're not, nothing's coming out of our mouths. Like, we, I said, yo, tell Kanye I want more. He looked at me like, and our mind stopped talking. He said, you know, I'm on Kanye. I said, I'm a fan of Kanye. And he's looking, he's like, no, I heard what you said. I said, that was one statement. This is in our minds. I don't even know if this conversation really happened. <laughs> 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 I'm telling you, you never seen Watson and Holmes? I went too far. Watson and Holmes is a, a nobody knows what Watson and Holmes is. Please pull it up. Damn, no, can, like Sherlock listen, Holmes? Listen, I, yes. I watch all the... For lack of a better term, I watch all the white movies. The white dumb movies, like the, the you know the, the dumb and dumberest. I watch it. Oh, and watch it. You don't know what I'm talking about? Will now this huh? You want Will Ferrell? Will Ferrell? Yeah. 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 That shit is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I went too far. I went too far. So now loud motherfucking records. This motherfucking thing. I, you've been to the bad boy thing. Is this Loud Records a tour, Randy Acker? This is a tour. Oh, yeah. I mean, this just that a, show he's doing. If you look yeah. down the list, you're Especially like, Especially if you want to get me, like, say, a couple of Prodigy verses. I think this is a tour tour with Drink Champs I've attached heard, to it. Ooh, I've heard that. That's what cool. yeah. 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 Drink Champs attached to it. Because I've been looking at the flyers, there's no host to there. DJ oh, yeah. EFN turning out the motherfucker. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, yo, yo, yo. <laughs> what? All my kids. 
Jonathan said he should take Dream Champs on the road. Oh. With the loud oh. talk, we are together <laughs> like we've been since back. <laughs> <laughs> crazy thing is, one of my best friends, one of my great friends is Buster Rhymes, right? And I fuck with him every like two or three months, right? Like somebody would ask me like the biggest bag, and they'd be like, hey, do you think Buster would take it? And I always fuck with Buster, because I know he's never gonna do it. You know, I just started managing him. Who, Buster? Oh, yeah. shit. Let me, all right, let me just tell you something about Buster. All right, if you want to be funny, well, this is my brother. Listen, this is the funniest joke. I won't deal with numbers, but let's just say, this is the number Buster wants, right? You would give Buster that same number plus a little something, but if you say it's an old school show, he won't the, do it. He won't do it. <laughs> I don't know if you're just going on with the fuck I just said. If you bring Buster the, the same bag, maybe one might be a little bigger. But Buster feels like, nah, I'm not old school, so I never have to do an old school show. And that is the most honorable thing that I can tell y'all, my dude. Like, that's honorable. Because me, I don't really give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> old school is another 35,000. I'm in. <laughs> Call me old, nigga. I'm doing Rob Banks and them niggas. It takes two to make a thing go <laughs> <laughs> I'm out there with that generation. Listen, I'm with the MC Light in them. I don't care. But listen, let me tell you something about Buster Rhymes, bro. I've tried. And then I, I, for three years after I tried, I just fuck with him. Like, like if I ever bring him an offer, he just be looking at it like, I know this somewhere this is an old school. <laughs> and, he will, and listen, I'm going to be honest. At first, I was like, you know, Buster's crazy. But now, like late, years later, I realize and I respect his integrity, I respect his morals, and I respect his stance. He is a, is a brother that's been in hip hop longer than all of us, probably. But guess what? If he wants to take that stance, if he's in the middle of he's a genie, I have to respect him. He's a motherfucking genie. In my mind, when I speak to Buster Rhymes on the floor, on the phone, his shit is, he's just floating in the air. <laughs> he's just in there like this. He's a genie. And I respect him. He's my brother. I'm sorry. So, so the first record I ever put it through the street team, like when I came with the 140, mm -hmm. was Leaders Under the School, just wow. a case of the PTA. It's just another case of well, what label PTA. Was that? Oh, that's true. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah. Niggas my age now. Nah, everybody looking at me. Like, like, ain't nobody singing this. Like, what the yeah. fuck? Yeah, that you. That's the one my favorite you know, I, you know you impressed. Yeah, me. no, that's an that, amazing. That, that record was amazing. Mm. That, uh, record, uh, that record and brand new being slow down. What slow do? down. Yeah. Right. Slow down. You did that one too? Too? No, that was on Electra. But those are the two first two records that I promoted through my through the, official, SRC. Through the official street team. Yeah. Mm. Do you think there's anything that you guys were doing in the street team era, like the physical street team era, mm -hmm. that can be applied today? I think you need both today. I really do. I, I mean, to me, it's like when I go into a market, I'm going to a Walmart store and just hearing what people are talking mm -hmm. at 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. So, and that was my thing. I didn't work, this, my father had one of the most successful labels mm -hmm. in the world. We didn't grow up on the street, right? Mm. So I always had to figure out what that advantage was mm. for me. Right. So when I put the street team together and we started making some noise now, mm. my wife and kids lived in LA, but I would still spend one weekend out of the month here. Mm. So I would start off at um, King Plaza Mall mm. and go to one of the stores and just hang out and hear what the kids were saying. <clears throat> right? King's Plaza in Brooklyn? Yeah. Okay. Then I ended up Few hours later, Dr. J's on 34th Street, and, and just hung out there. Mm. One of my best friends owns training camp. Remember the old sneaker store in, on 45th Street? We got good work. Yeah. See, that's great work. right there. You see that? <laughs> well, <laughs> looks you know, a little not great <laughs> So, you know, and I would, I would end up working at training camp, like right. behind the counter, just hearing what, what, you know, 
what they're saying. And then I would end up at a place called BJ's in Washington Heights on 155th mm. of Broadway. Jesus. And that would be my Saturday. I ain't gonna lie. You sound like a cocaine dealer. <laughs> <laughs> Your description was so street. <laughs> but I, so I always came back to just like, I always, I'm a little competitive. So mm. I had a up on, you know, to mm. my street like, Hey, you know about this? You know, about, and they're looking at me like, "How the fuck is he knowing all this shit?" Like, right. but it'd be that one Saturday a month where I would start off in Brooklyn and end up in Washington Heights. Now, how about was it like? Cause Dead Prez, right? I'm gonna be honest with you. You listen to Dead Prez lyrics, right? It's probably the most anti-white lyrics there can probably be. How do you remove yourself? From that, like you, you know, I'm a fan of that press. So am I. I, I that's hard. Didn't so imagine hard. that. But what I'm that's saying, family, by the way, Florida. That's family, family. and that's that's what my people. What I'm saying is, like, how could you, like, because I always imagine, like, you know, when I hear Public Enemy, and I realize that people that's pushing Public Enemy was Leo Collins and things like that. But that, I had to learn that later. And what I'm saying is, like, when you hear that press, they 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 just the most pro blackest people ever and you guys signed them i signed them i mean it's quality the, music the, the, the records speak the, 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 yeah, the records were amazing and you know what at, at the end of the day they're performing mm. right but i can look at myself in the mirror that i know i did right by them right and whatever their beliefs are their beliefs are right. so i wish there was more of a trust right. that i wasn't the antichrist right right if, the, if there was a real trust the other way me and mob had Right. The way me and Wu had, right. the way me, Joe and Juan had, oh. they might have been the biggest group I had. Oh. Oh. But prior to you even signing them, their ideologies and their beliefs towards a certain group of people were that. It yeah. wasn't like they, they signed and then became that. They, no, they, 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 they were they, they, they were that from the, from the right. get go. Right. Or Jamal. Right. Yeah, he's a man. Yeah. He brought them to me. Yeah. Right. And you knew who was Lord Jamal. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's 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 it. That's it. That's it. And so so how did I, so like even like then you work with Public Enemy. I did. Yeah, that was my and, first project when I walked in the door. And when shout out to Bill Adler too. Yeah. He worked with Public right. Enemy, yeah. and he was at odds so, at yeah. some of the messages. So like like so how is that? Just like that. Like like help help me like describe like you know because I, I imagine like people, you know you you guys are uh, saying the people that they're saying is not me. But they're still saying, like, you know. Yeah, it was a little tricky for me because I came in as the young lawyer and okay. they were making a movie soundtrack with Spike Lee, who's also pretty controversial. Well, do the right thing? No, it was uh, He Got Game. Mm -hmm. uh, and we okay. did the soundtrack. Yeah. So I had to get in and figure out all the deals. Uh -huh. So I had to do a phone call with Chuck and Spike. Uh -huh. You know, Spike's a legend, and, Chuck's and a legend. You don't know them? I don't know, know them at all. I, 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 I and you're the lawyer. <laughs> I'm the lawyer. And you could have been whatever. Yeah, you're I mean, you already spot to begin with. Yeah, 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 it was yeah, already I'm on the wrong I was done. It yeah. went right I into the. I didn't even realize the crust. It went right into shit. It went right into sharecroppers in the field of copyright. Were you stealing our stuff? And yo, tell that Lior Cup. Like, it just went left right away. But, you know, I tried to be, you know, conciliatory. Right. My job was just to get the deals done. Right. Well, producers, the record's got to come out. Right. So I just kind of took it. I wasn't going to get into the conversation right. of because right. I didn't even understand it at that point. Right. Uh -huh. It took a while to kind of understand the, uh -huh. the the subcultures and a lot of the you know kind of things that Dead Prez would talk about or the five percenters that Wu Tang would talk about. Like that. And their stuff job was, is to push that envelope and push that art form to the fringes, and that's it is what it is, you know. Right. I mean, Dead Press came in with some T-shirts one day. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Can I have one?" He right. said, "Yeah, give me ten bucks." <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I respect that. Or I don't know. That's kind of They 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 didn't back down, right? right. So I I did respect him, right. right? And I and I gave him the ten bucks. It wasn't like, <laughs> I wasn't where I paid for the shirts. Right. It wasn't like, "Hey, I paid for it," you know. Right. And I always looked at it as like, "I'm not that." Like, right. I'm a, I am a But there was like a situation. No, we never had it. We never, okay. they were always right. polite. You know, yeah. like, we never they're said. They're great people. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're great know, people. Fine. I ran to stick. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, right? You had to. Uh, on the plane. Yeah, oh, from okay. here, from Atlanta to here, actually. Okay. Right? And we spoke, you know, for two hours. I mean, right. it was amazing. You know, right. M1, you know, called, you know, right. to get this thing done. You know, it's right. like, I really want to 
be it. So no, that's dope. Like, I, I I respect that. I respect that. You know what I mean? Like um, I respect. I respect. Let me make some noise. <laughs> whatever happened, you're not gonna know this, but uh, me and my boy Eddie, he's here. We work the the. The Loud Street team. We were the Miami. See, I told you. I, I thought it was, 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 was the bad girl, girl Jesse. Listen, listen. No, you had Yara Mira. Mira Hawkins. Mira. Oh, and then we took over after that. Okay. Listen, I told you. He's going to remember. Listen. Yeah. Listen. But I've always been wondering what happened to Buddha. Buddha is Gabi's brother, right? So Buddha is our. Oh, yeah, Buddha and Gabi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's when we worked. That's when we were the street team guys. Buddha is Gabi and the whole reggaeton and just. That's right. Buddha's whole reggaeton. God, That's fine. And yeah. Gabby's got Gabby's, 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 Gabby's a beast. Yeah, Gabby's looking like he looking. He yeah. half of a man. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, lost, yeah. he lost. I respect yeah. you, Gabby yeah. man. Shout out to Yo, Gabby, man. Man. Respect the you, legend. bro. Yeah. I'm so happy. Not only I respect you, I love you, and I'm happy for you, Gabby. Like I'm not see like he got the super smile on yeah. his shit. He like that. Yeah. I ain't even <laughs> see him. Gabby just, just got a huge check. Yeah. Oh yeah. I forget the kid that he just signed. He just did a deal. Some got some new hot kids. Some crazy. I mean. And it's cool. No, well it deserved. Bring it down. I know if it's no, not feels like a hip hop thing. Because because Gabby was like your guy. Ga- Let's Gabby, just be clear. Yeah. So Gabby. So he well, brought you. It was Buda. No, Gabby. No, Eddie no. was over there too, right? Eddie, Puerto Rican Rob. Er- yeah, everybody, right? Yeah. So Steve, Steve out here. So let's get into this. When I did the whole South tour, right? So Buddha was the head of the street team. Yep. He brings his brother. Gabby's what seventeen years old at the time. Yeah, man. Right, so I'm in the back well, of He brings Gabby. He brings Gabby, right? So oh. I have 75 grand in cash on For no reason? Or? Just got to be, you know. Let's, let's make some less noise for the 70 grand. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. All right, so in those days, we're going on the road for six weeks. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't bring any clothes. Every it's city hard. we go into, I just find a Nike town Black or McCall. just whatever. <laughs> and, and just, and just go. So. I'm in the back of the bus, and I hear somebody just, I don't know who Gabby is, but I'm peeing in my pants, that's how hard I'm laughing. Whoever the fuck he's, you know, cracking up. So I said, you know what? You're staying with me, and you hold on to this bag, and don't go in this bag, just hold it with your life. So you know, like, these tour buses, they can't park in front of the bus, right? So we have to, like, the 15th day, I have 20 Nike bags now from just going to the Foot Lockers of the world, the Macy's, you know, wherever yeah. the fuck we are. Was, yeah. I would buy clothes for the day. Yeah. So he would have to bring it. I said, I'm going to fuck with him. I'll take $1,000 out of the bag. Right. And I'm like, where's this money? Like, we're missing $1,000. Meanwhile, he's, like, choking himself because he has, like, 20 bags around his fucking neck. <laughs> <laughs> he really, so he really starts to have a panic attack. Right. So, got me. Uh, got me. And then I realized, you know what? This guy's a fucking soldier, and he's, yeah. and he's, and he's with me for life. Right. So, cut to, we come back from doing this tour. Somebody breaks into our stock. Do you remember the old Starter Loud Jackets mm-hmm. that, we, that we had? Um, Never had one, but God, continue. <laughs> <laughs> they, break, they, they, they break in and they steal $100,000 worth of jackets. I didn't know y'all niggas was making $100,000 worth neither. <laughs> <laughs> right? So the videotape, it's Gabby's cousin. Right. Wow. And Buddha's cousin. Dominican. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they, now they're Puerto Rican. Yeah. What? Fuck! Why did I say that? So they both are gonna quit. I'm like, you're not gonna quit. And I'm fucking around. I'm like, you're just gonna bring me back a finger. Right. Oh shit. Right. So um, cut to two days later, my my cell phone rings and it's Buddha. He goes, I don't have him. But I got his wife tied up. You want me to get her finger? <laughs> <laughs> and Yo, Buddha was a real motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. He is a real I mean, He's still around. He's a, he's, are we supposed to make noise for this? Like, no, 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 no. That didn't happen, actually. No, <laughs> no there was no finger taken. But uh, I mean, it was, but it was like they were. I mean, you talk about two guys that were just so fucking loyal. Right. No, those, the, the, that whole squad was incredible, man. Those yeah. guys were incredible to work with. Yeah, I remember Great being people. I remember being honored. I did for like executive of the year, and I, my dad's with me. 
And he's like, what does um, God being Buddha do? Because he fell in love with him. I said, watch. I'm at the Delano Hotel by the pool. Out here? And, yeah. And Gabby and Buddha are at the hotel next door. Mm-hmm. Right? I said, you know, we, this went the two ways. I was like, get over here, 911. Uh-huh. Within 30 seconds, you hit 15 cars crashing. Okay. Like they just jumped out of the car, they didn't put it in a park and just destroyed the whole, <laughs> the whole ballet, right? And, and you hear it by the pool. I said, my father's like, what the fuck is that? I said, that, that's God being Buddha. Making <laughs> <laughs> that grand motherfucking entrance. <laughs> so if you had to do it all over again, is this something you you wouldn't do? Yeah. What would you wouldn't do? I wouldn't have sold to somebody. Damn, Steve, I'm going to be honest. I need to understand why. With Sony, we were the small fish in the ocean. Compared to BMG being the big fish in the pond. Right. And if I didn't listen, as much as I love Jimmy, if I just, just thought about the bottom line a little bit, because Jimmy was offering you what? Jimmy that, wasn't right. He was just saying, fuck BMG. Don't worry about the bottom line. They're making so much money off you this way, that way. Market share, this. They're bonusing up the ass. And um, I mean, and he was paying me a shitload of money. So you wish you would have went with Jimmy? No, I wish I would have just... I should have stayed. Stayed, 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 stayed. I, I would have just stayed. He said, let me do what the fuck I wanted to do. If I, if I wanted to change the is that deal. What you, uh, 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 I'm sorry to cut you off, Steve, but is that... What do you, what do you feel on that situation? Um, no, I think he has a point, but on the flip side, I mean, we did have a great opportunity at Sony yeah. with Relativity, and I mean, we did $100 million in billing in, wow. in, 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 in one quarter. Excuse me, tell me. Let's <laughs> <laughs> need to say what you said again, I'm sorry. 190? No, no, it was 123 to be In exact. one billing cycle? In the fourth quarter. 1999? 1999, 2000. Yeah. Jesus. Best year of my life. And that's where I only are in Def Jam because the year before, they put out the two DMX records, I think, mm. um, and they had that crazy fourth quarter. Mm. I so, also had a record at that time. I did not throw out two. <laughs> um, I had no more. I had one that but so, I was not on Def Jam. I was that, on penalty records. And yeah, I was a little guy. But continue, continue. You were never a little guy. So, <laughs> so I took Leo's blueprint. I was like, you know what? Let's stack up the fourth quarter. So we had a Wu record, a Prodigy record, a 3 6 Mafia record, an Exhibit record. Base and IC Prodigy record? Yeah. A, I was on that. A Flex, uh, a flex record, a uh, Project Pat record, an MOP record, and a Dead Press record. Mm. Also on the project back pack record as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, loud, loud used to fuck me. Come let's make some noise. Yeah. Yeah. And Chris was up there at that time. No, Chris. You know, no, um, he, uh, Chris was was my man from the beginning. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Let me just tell you something. I don't know if you remember this. When it came time for my solo, that was the thing. It was loud, or it was definitely. It was like we kept going. It kept going, and the thing was. Chris was like, man, you know what? I just, I want to be mob deep spilling it. But I could have, like, like Chris told me the kid kept it real. He was just like, yo, let that be, if it's a Queens guy, let it be a mob deep building. And that's the reason why I went to that chat. This is real shit. This is real shit. Steve was my man, always. He's like, I don't give a fuck, you coming over here with me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it was Chris. But that's why um, I wanted all you guys to, you know, to share the story. But, like uh, so 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 so, you guys always work. Okay, I'm sorry. No, I just I remember uh, I remember you, mm. man. So when we had we were still at BMG, mm. and our office in LA was in the BMG building, and I think that's where it was. Mm. And Stephen had some sort of episode right. with somebody, and you came in at the right time to calm him down. Oh yes, I remember. Oh, that's right. Me and Exhibit were going at it. Yes, I remember. <laughs> Holy shit. Tell us this story, shit, man. No, that's a fact. I walked in. I walked in to see Steve, <laughs> and I don't know what exhibit was 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 on, 
But I walked in. And I, I was, was like, wrong. I told the exhibit to go fuck himself or something. Like that. I mean, I, I was. I mean, but that was our relationship. And right. then he came. Like you're not gonna say it on the phone. Say it to my face. Right. And he came in and we got in each other's face. And, and I happened to be coming to see you. And I think you guys <laughs> and the exhibit and and he was and I said no, I could not allow it. But because me and exhibit is, is great, right. great friends. And I'm, I'm and when exhibit's oldest son and my oldest son are born the same day. Wow! Wow! God bless them. God bless them. <laughs> He's performing too. No, that's yeah. beautiful, man. That's beautiful. I'm telling. I'm trying to tell y'all. Um, this would be uh, like y'all, y'all Leroy Jetson. When I say Leroy Jetson, you remember how like the Jetsons would, would travel? They would be the same place. They go to a different. I don't know if y'all realize that in the Jetsons, the Jetsons. I don't know where tra- you're going with this. Yeah, they travel, <laughs> they, but they, they're keeping the same thing. That's exactly what that tour could be. The tour oh. could be the traveling label. I like the Drink Champs loud tour. I love the Drink Champs because we oh, are going to come out strong. It sounds strong. Uh, it sounds like three hundred million dollars. Can we make an announcement now? Let's make an announcement. God damn it. We're going to do it. Listen, we're going to send it off. What day is the, t- the actual? Uh, January 30th. 30th. Next, yeah. next Thursday. January 30th. And okay, I think there's some way we can make some way, something make it work. We could do, do it. Our too. So we could um, do it in that green room. Where we talk with all the artists as they're going in and out of the show. No, but, it, but, but what we would do, we would provide even more than that. We're great, we're, we're great um, street team people and services. Mm-hmm. But what we would do is that's behind the scenes, but we will also host because you know, you got to have somebody talking in between that press and motherfucking. Yeah, I think Mar- Dream Chance hosting, and yeah, then, yeah. You know, EFN is being the yeah, motherfucking the thing, room. and yeah. then I'm coming out as host, but then every night behind the scenes is a Dream Chance episode. That is a lot yes. of money. I'm not like a post show to the show. So really, that's really what this industry is about. Is like <laughs> us as people that been. I, I said it earlier. Fraternity. Yeah. That's what I finally getting to feel like. Like you know, the other day, Boosie wore a Kappa 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 shirt, and the fucking college people lost their mind. Kappa. Sorry, sir. <laughs> exactly. <Take it> serious. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly what I'm saying? They lost their mind. I'm and, okay, okay, I'm sorry, sir. I appreciate your your what motherfucking you're intelligence. <laughs> but what I'm trying to say is that's what I feel like hip hop should be. Like I feel like if you got ten years in this game by hip hop, we should have a flag shirt. Because this is, because this is, you know, for lack of a better term, like, it, what do these people say? That culture vultures and shit like that. Like, oh, I feel geez. like you got 10 years, 15 years in this game. You should have, we should, we, we should, should have a pen. We should have a pen. Like, like generals, like generals yeah. get. Like the Marines. Yes. I'm 40 in. You get the decorations. They, they call it decorations. Like, this is what I'm trying to say. I'm 40 years in. 40 <laughs> years in. And you have never been called a culture vulture, ever. Or have you? I, not that I, I don't know. No, I don't think you have been. No, I don't think you have. But I have, but I don't think you have. have. But what, you're what, quite what, honest, man. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think that is, Steve? If you had a, if, what do you think that? Is? What do you think that means? What? That I haven't been called on? No. Uh, what does it mean to be a culture I don't even know what it means. It's yeah. taking advantage of, of somebody? I mean, oh, that's... Yeah. I mean, that's what do you think that is, Randy? Yeah. They, what did you do that warranted them calling you that? I don't know. You'd have he to was ask Mr. Dash that. I don't okay. know. He's the one they referred to me oh, as. Oh, no. Okay. But I think, I think that the idea behind the name is that you're profiting off of hip-hop culture and not giving back. That you don't respect the culture. That you don't participate, you're just trying to exploit it and get money, and that's where your concern ends. But that's a real concern. I think it's totally yeah, legitimate it's, concern. Yeah, There's a history of concern. plenty of people yeah. exploiting other people based on color, based on their job, based on male or female. There's a lot of exploitation. I just don't think it's just restricted to music and hip-hop and No, there's culture vulture in all kinds of culture. All kinds. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever culture you're in. Yeah. yeah. But I, I think, I think, man, you know what? We have been doing this in hip hop, and hip hop has been ex- succeeding. And I think that we all together as a people know who is, is that people. Parker? This is yeah. our Niente. Yeah, 
I, I feel like Steve. I did not offer you a drink this whole time. Well, I can't drink. I've got to consider it hard. Because so. for real, because yeah. you really had like a heart. Yeah, I had a real heart he attack. No, no, no. He has a heart? No. <laughs> He's just like the scarecrow? That, 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 that was the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> you know like, you really had a heart. That condition. Where's the line? Where's the line? Where's the line? Scarecrow? You know, I don't know. Because I remember there was like a Steve, and then this this is the after. This is the after Steve. The after Steve? <laughs> no, you know what I'm trying to say. Like, you know. The before Steve was nuts. The wild Steve. Right. He's, he's very crazy. I like him. <laughs> but this is the calm now. The pulse yeah. protect your heart, Steve. Yeah. Yes. And, and you have I mean, I got a defibrillator right, right here. So that's definitely gonna calm you down. Yeah. For sure. I have no idea what you just said. A defibrillator? I didn't say it. <laughs> defibrillator. So you know when your heart stops? It just no. I don't know. No it's like the, the the electric joint. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. oh, that shit. Yeah. You ha you have one built in. Yeah. No way. Holy shit. And I'm smoking like this. No, nah, we're good. I'm moving back. No, no, I mean, sure yeah, did. I just can't smoke, but I could get high. <laughs> <laughs> Did you take edibles? What? Have you? Uh, I have. You have? Yeah. Okay. I've been in your crib in Beverly Hills. It's phenomenal, by the way. Just got <laughs> 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 This is a little Wayne shit. Right, come on, come on Wayne shit, man. Why are you not this Columbia one? That's my shit. All right. I, I ain't know what that is. Let's try a little Wayne well, shit. Let's try a little Wayne shit. Come on, let's do a little Wayne shit. Yeah, I mean, been... How do you say it again? Boom, 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 boom. I don't boom, think any of us know what it is. Sis, no, the pork, go ask Bella. I'm only listening to Bamboo. 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 She said like, Bamboo. Which is like bamboo, but not really. It's my island sister. You know what I'm saying? It's good. It's good. All right, sis. All right. As posa, oh, and yeah. I listen to her. That's it. All, right, all, all of you other guys, I don't trust you at all. <laughs> <laughs> you been giving me false. Anybody want a shot? <laughs> Tell me what? For years. <laughs> Take a shot. Go grab something and take a shot. All right, brother, take a shot. Motherfucking, hey, hey, you come on, take a shot. No, 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 take a shot. Take a motherfucking shot. You gotta take a shot. You gotta take a shot. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Try, try, no, no, you gotta try Columbia White. Steve is a shot. Give Steve a shot. Give Steve a shot. Listen, Steve, this is about Steve Ripken. <laughs> So we're gonna we're gonna keep with Steve Ripley. I'm not gonna lie. Thank you. You're one of the best CEOs out there. You're a person that stuck stick by your artists no matter what. Uh, it doesn't even matter if you agree with their ideologies or not. You stand there. That and that's the that's the definition of hip hop. That's the definition of what hip hop is supposed to be. Sometimes it's like you know what that shit. Like right now, like uh, when I listen to the young generation, I don't agree with. None of they shit, but I still bop to it. <laughs> I, can, like, I, I, I can line drink a lean nigga, but I be thinking it. <laughs> you know what I'm <laughs> so that's the definition of hip hop. I, I'm talking about a fucked up message. This but, message you know, got but, crazy. But, but, but to me, also the definition, right, mm -hmm. is it's not about the wins sometimes, it's mm -hmm. about how many times you get up. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So to me, that's what hip hop mm -hmm. is. Okay, so let's just salute to that. that. Salute everybody. <laughs> okay, now let's shoot more. it down quickly. Come on, fire one. Then I gotta use the bathroom. Yeah. Take a big piece first, man. I got me go first. Both of them. Yeah. I gotta say, let me say, 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 say this one thing. <sighs> <laughs> now after all this shit, right? Well, you didn't even take it down, bro. No, hold up, man. Hold up, man. No, 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 no. man. <laughs> You came down to hang out with us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Now this Wu Tang Art album. <laughs> what did you? What did? What, when you? The Scarelli. What's the dude's name? Scarelli. No, let's not. Let's not even talk let's about that. that. Listen, I'm never gonna second guess Rizzo. Right. I'm not. What? Right. That was his. I understand what he was It was a dope about. idea. The, I thought the idea was it amazing. A, it's a piece yeah. of art. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it is a dope idea. It just got exploited in the wrong yeah. way by got, all got, the, Well, it got in the wrong hands. Yeah. Right? right. So that's um, yeah. that's all. But I would never second guess him at all. But it's like right. when the MET Joe D. Man record started coming, right. I, I stayed in New York for the summer. Mm. He would come up to the office every single day with a notebook. Yeah, and, keep, it had, keep, keep going, keep going. and it had 27. Lines. Right. He would have 27 questions, right? And I would say yes to 26 out of the 27. And he would say to me, why are you saying yes? Are you scared of me? I'm like, why would I be scared of you? Everything that you're asking for is making sense. Right. 
And the one thing that I might have to say no to is because maybe I, I just don't have the money. But that even makes sense. Right. So it has nothing to do about fear. Was there ever any of these artists or any of these records that were presented to you that you thought, I don't, I don't want to touch this? this no, nah, I never. Like but when Mob Deep came, you know how now, like if someone brings a, a a piece of content or a project that had previously had a deal and wasn't necessarily commercially successful, they might be like, nah, I don't want to touch that. Like what made you see that Mob Deep could be Mob Deep? What they were the, gonna the be. day they came into that office, P wasn't there. It was Have and just the rest of the Mob Deep right. crew. They had this energy that just, I mean, it was like how Wu performed. They just had this. So it didn't matter what they had done before. No, that, that to you was that, right. that, that that album was a brick. No, right, right. What album? We told Mob, Mob Deep. Like I'm asking, wait, like hit it from no, the back no, album. Oh, hit it from the back album. Yeah, brick. That's yeah. Fact. So, well, so when they came in. Like, they just took over the whole room. And it was like, I gotta have these guys. I remember that they went into the men's room to smoke a blunt, the, yeah. and the, the fire alarm and the water just came down. I was like, this is the perfect spinoff. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 a a blue tank. As a matter of fact, and they kicked it, BMG kicked us out, where it was like, you guys gotta have your own office now. So, but, but, um, but all right, all right, so Wu Tang, in between Wu Tang, did Nas come out before or after Wu Tang? Before. No, well, around well, the same well, time, actually. Google it. Not, oh, no, has. Nas, although he had the record with yep. uh, Third uh, Search and Wild um, Pitch. Well, yeah, uh, Back to the Grill again. Yeah, back to the Grill again. Yeah, and then so that, the that, that was before. That was and then yeah. um, he might have had a single before us. Because mm. I remember when Nas called Rizza, mm. um, they were ecstatic that Rizza was going to do two or three beats on the album. But they're all ninety three releases. Both of them were ninety three, like official the album releases. I think they. I think Nas came ninety four. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah he Nas came ninety four. Singles, singles, yeah. Because yeah. 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 Wu Tang came yeah. November ninety yeah. three. Right. Huh? Wu Tang what? Wu Tang ninety three. Wu Tang came November 9th, 93. And the, the week it came out was uh, Tribe and R Kelly. Ooh. And then Snoop came. That's, that's different today. Yeah. Yeah. The way it <laughs> yeah. And then Snoop came out the 16th. Wow. Night. But, but Snoop. Snoop was out in 92, though. So Snoop came. With no, the, with, with, with his second album. album? I'm, I'm no, his, first, his first solo, Doggy Style. Doggy Style was in 92? 93. No, 93. No, 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 late 93. Can we check that and see if my name no, is definitely, definitely late 93. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, we, can we check the date, though? I'm almost positive it was November 16th. It's, yeah, it's definitely late 93. I know that for facts. I, I, I love this right here. This is the shit. But you know what makes it confusing? Because back then, people were promoting albums months right, so it's, in advance. Two weeks off. All right. Yeah. yeah, like a year. Right? Yeah, like a year. Like now, nobody could conceive that that someone would have singles to lead up to an album almost like a year, half a year. Do you agree with this surprise album? Yeah. yeah. How about you? How about you, Jonathan? Jonathan, I wanted to see. I just said to all you guys, this surprise album shit. Like nowadays, there's no promotion at all. There's no need for a street team. There's no need for nothing. It just like it's just surprise. If you have these people, they, they just drop a surprise album. Do you agree with That's that? That's only if they have the following that that you makes have sense. Have the but some of these people think they have the following and they, they're they very, they're going to learn. Drake, Drake, has, Drake has the following. Drake has a following. Beyonce. Any Eminem. megastar could do that, but Ooh, nobody. Maybe. Eminem did yeah, it last week. Eminem did it last week. Word of mouth now. It, it, I mean, it's like light switch speed. Word right. travels so fast now. It's, it's Before, suppressing the buck. I mean, we, like I was saying, we, we would generally release three 12 inches at least yeah. before we drop an album. With, with punk. Before Ooh. Still Not a Player. Mm. Three videos. Right. Yeah, the yeah. original version. So, yeah. so we had You Ain't a Killer. Right. That's the white label. The yeah. joint. Yeah. Like, yeah. Still the not joint a would player. be real. Um, wait. We had You Ain't a Killer. The, the original. You're Not a Player. You're Not a Player with the OJs. Right. The original right. without right. Uh, and the, and the, then, the and, and then we came with Still Not a Player. Then we came six weeks later uh. with the uh, Twins. Right, which was yeah. a deep cover record. Right. Yeah. right? Mm. And then we came with your record. And then we came and came up. Right? Yeah. So we yeah. had five singles, which in a matter of... You, you, th you think... You think... Of, uh, you think of, oh, damn, that, that's, 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 that was fucking awesome, by the way. The way you just broke that down, I don't know if everybody listened. Yeah. Like, that shit was ill. So we did four simple. videos. So we did... We did four, yeah, we four did videos the, with a five-song layout. Yeah. You think anybody could do that nowadays? The only one... Drake. Uh, I don't know any new four. artist that could... You got me on that one. I don't know. 
No, Who? Lil Wayne could do it. Lil Wayne. Yeah, Kanye, Kanye, Kanye could do it. Kanye, 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 right, but not a brand new artist. Right. But when you think it, it gets them the results of that one million in, in the first week, or the million in the first week, shit is done. I, done. I, I don't know how this whole streaming shit works now. I, yeah, I know the record um, companies are getting um, paid yeah. a fortune. Mm-hmm. Right? I know mm-hmm. Universal gets like $500 million a year from fucking Spotify. Ooh. So, really? I mean, it's something, right, right Randy? Yeah, I mean, they right. split up the uh, subscription fees. And I think the reason it works so good in the surprise albums is because back when we started, your friend would have to buy it, then you'd have to tape it from you, and the other friend would have to buy it. Now, once it comes out, everyone has access to it. Right. So it's just a word of mouth thing that can spread like that. I'm working with you the don't have to pay boys. anything extra. I'm working right. with the Suicide Boys now. Okay. Oh. That's the money big. that they are making. This is a, huge. A, a, what suicide kind of band? Oh, yeah. yeah. It's a punk band, right? They're a rap it's a hip hop. Yeah, punk? they're two kids yeah. out of not New Orleans, the city, but the country of New Orleans. Mm. And um, the way they are streaming right this second mm. is crazy, right? I would deal this up. With Universal mm. in six months, it's gonna be the biggest bidding war. And I've never had a bidding war in my whole career. It's gonna be the biggest bidding war of the year. Mm. And Probably can own your masters too if you like. To. Well, they own. We own our. We own our own masters. All right. Right? So, yeah. so do you wow. do you recommend an artist that has that kind of following that you're talking about? Could they? Go independent because we streaming are, allows we, you to be we are, we are independent. autonomous. We are independent. We're going through Caroline right this second, which is owned by Universal, right? Mm. right? So we are. So like, say, what's the, what's what's the pros in going to a major label at this point? There's no more pro. Mm. Well, Steve, that, relax. relax. Y'all still be taking out advances? Illuminati. You see, yeah, we, we have this conversation like all the time. We were on opposite <laughs> sides of this. Listen, what are you saying? Get mad at you. Y'all still taking advances? And he said that. Huh? I don't know what you eh? said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've been hanging out with Mr. Lee for two days. Yeah. It's fucking you up, man. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Lee crawled and then I don't know what happened after no, that. Really. <laughs> if, if you're a brand new artist, okay. right, in, in today's marketplace, mm-hmm. right, you got to jumpstart the record yourself before this the right. fact. Before the labels. This is a fact. Before the labels come. So if you run out of money, mm-hmm. then you do need the label, mm-hmm. right? But if you could figure out a way to get that money, keep that money, own your own shit and do it yourself, you're going to make a fucking fortune. Right. And if you have a team that knows how to monetize properly Steve, you're what you're doing. too much game right now. It's just right. I mean, but, but, but that's my whole... It's not being... Giving, it's like, if I could help you what? make $10 million... Please do that. Right? <laughs> and if God would if I even needed something from you... Just please, I got you. I, I think you would be there for me. And yeah, I'm, not, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about money. Yeah, I got you. Right? Yes, so, got you. so that's always been my thing. When me and Puff were together at BMG, even though he was at Arista... Mm. And I was at RCA. I gave him my connect mm. to the chairman's boss. The chairman. That's what he calls himself now. He calls himself the chairman. Let's make some noise for the chairman. <laughs> so th- that's how I've always just in life. If I, that's if, hard. I if I could help you, it's hard. Right. great. I'm not One hand I, washes the other. But I'm not asking for anything in return. I, I still mm. gotta rely on my, myself and my team to do what we mm. have to do. Mm. All right. Now, so we also know you have like like the good music connect. Is there good music connects coming out at this uh, well, show? I don't think so. Is there is there a DMX like you know out of the rehab straight to the motherfucking radio? There, 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 there might be something. There might be something like that. Off the flex, off the flex set. Because if you remember, Randy, uh, on the you flex set. Right, he had uh, on the third album of the flex album. Mm. We had the first single with DMX. Yep. I don't know. What single was that? I forget the name of it. Right. But we shot West the Point. video in Toronto. Toronto? We shot the video in Toronto. Jet? It was yeah. the jet. Yeah. Yeah. So you it's remember Rick Burns, right? Burn and, then the, and then the dog ran off the runway or something. I mean, it was something. Yeah. Yeah. So I, Sounds about right. I just, yeah. so, so you knew it's when they gave all the drugs to the white guy. <laughs> <laughs> because customs came out the private jet. <laughs> 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 they they ready. They did. <laughs> Give him one more shot. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's what makes Steve dope, because you know X is crazy out of his mind. <laughs> great, great guy. Yeah. But we had Moskowitz and Chris working Tom with us Moskowitz. at the club. Well, yeah, yes. they were all and on Chris, the jet. You say Chris, Chris is called. We stayed outside X's house for maybe two hours while the jet just sat there. there. 
No one knew if we were going to come. Everyone well, I, was I, nervous. I, I don't know. I, was, I got confused. X like, missed a couple things during the in front of um, um, X's house? No, no, no we no, put no, the jet. Okay. The, so X was like, 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 the way you said it. Like, but, the jet was in front X was of the house. X was in the house. Was living, house was living, X, X, was living, X was living in White Plains. And we moved, We had the jet originally coming out of Teterboro. We moved the jet from Teterboro to White Plains. To just make it as easy as fucking possible. Uh, he still ain't make it. He made yeah, it. Yeah, I think he was living in Mount Kisco, though, at the okay. time, actually. He made it. We got there. Okay. Yeah. Late hours, hours late, overages, crazy, but we made it. It happened. And I remember Leo called And I remember Leo calling me. He goes, He is my biggest artist, and I'm going to do everything possible not to make this happen. Oh, shit. <laughs> Not you know, that whole that. shit caused a whole lot of problems. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Let's just rewind the fuck we talking about. Chris so, Boskowitz. What, so yeah. you, just for a performance? No, no for Flex is, Flexes. He became, became the single. Flexes is like the single. Flexes is like the single. So just, just him recording the record was a problem? Doing the video. He did 12 million. 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 He did 12 million records in what, six months? So he's Def Jam's biggest artist. Chris leaves Def Jam to come become our partner pretty much right and then Todd oh, left and then Todd I'm in Italy I didn't wait, even know wait, that Todd you, you gotta stop because <laughs> like, I keep saying people with first names like listen we gotta the last name is very important when you say Todd yeah, we need our listeners to Google Todd shit Moscow, right? Todd, Todd Moscow. so Todd Moscow has left he was working he, on the Flex project he was so with Chris he was even Def Jam okay. we didn't even have a deal yet mm-hmm. but I guess Leo found out and he kicked him out of the bill am I correct and there's something, something he found out, yes. Yeah. I'm in Italy okay. dealing with the new owner of Red Distribution. Okay. Which we own. Um, Sony, which is part yeah, of Sony, which right? we still own 30% of. To this day. <laughs> no, this is, we had to sign off on the deal, and I wasn't signing off. I was a knucklehead in those days. Right. I wasn't right. And Leo, I don't know how the fuck he reached me, but he found <laughs> me in uh, Lake Cuomo, Italy. And he says, <laughs> I'm gonna do it. <laughs> no, this is this is all like very mafia shit. This is big mafia shit to me, right? Yeah. I'm gonna do everything possible. When does Al Pacino come into the picture? <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh-huh. I'm gonna do everything possible to block this. Just DMX being on a single. Yeah. Holy shit! God. But I don't think it was about me. I think it was more about Chris and Moskowitz right. leaving Leo. All right. So and he to fuck with y'all. What? Chris came. Chris came first, and then Moscow's came like six months. Ago. Yeah, I can see where Leo was coming from. You guys were. Uh, uh, with that, I would have done the same. Thing. Yeah, you guys was a threat. Yeah. And then you had his number one album on your first single. Yeah. Number one artist. So you was ruthless, bro. You was ruthless. Let's just make some noise for you, who you are. <laughs> who you are, bro? Who you are? Cause you still out here. I mean, I'm just me. I mean, and, it, it, it's, and so, oh shit. Fuck you, right? I got my notes. My, my notes. My notes. I fucking got my notes. I thought the blunt fell on his head. No, 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 I got notes. So, um, now 2020. You say you're, you're on Kanye. You're on the dogs. It's great. Um, we, we hope to see for him soon. Is that what the 2020's focus is? So when I left Kanye, okay. Oh, you left Kanye. Well, no, wasn't, wasn't no, X no, at one of Kanye's things recently? At the, uh, Sunday Sunday. Did you make that happen? No, that's all. I'm gonna. T- I'll tell you how the okay. whole thing went. So, no, it was neutral with me and Ye. And um, I got a phone call from the head of CAA's music department. CIA. CAA. CAA. Creative Arts Agency. So totally wrong. So and I said it very confident. I like, see how it. <laughs> I'm not so sorry. So, no, so, so they said, "What are you going to do now?" And I was like, "I don't know. I'm going to, you know." He just paid me literally for two years, and right. he was paying me a lot of money. Right. So I said, "I'm going to figure it out." But I know I want. My, I don't know if I want to work with anybody again. I want my own thing. Right. He goes, there's this management company that managed a whole bunch of dance arts. Um, Steve Aoki, you know, a whole bunch of DJs. They just got a shitload of money from a company, at, uh, from a private equity company out of London, and they're looking to go in the urban space. You want to take a meeting with them? Mm-hmm. So I was like, 
all right, cool. Take the meeting. And we work out a deal where it's called lab management. Mm-hmm. And um, I had nobody. Um, and then X performed at Yay Sunday service. Wow. And that night, that Sunday night after, I had a dream that I was going to make his new comeback out. A dream? A dream. Right. So I called Rich Isaac. Isaacson. I was like, who's managing X? And he said a guy by the name of Pat Gallo. Uh, Divine Rex. Right. right? Yes, so I tried calling Pat, didn't call me back. You know, you didn't know this. So Ali got me with Pat. Flew to New York, sat down with um, X, worked it out, sat down with the Rough Riders, who I love. Um, worked what they needed, and now in the next month or two, we're going to make a new album. Okay. He's, and he's, he's, because uh, I'm, I'm really not impressed. Um, is he out of rehab? He's right? out. Okay. okay. Big him up, bro. Because, um, you know, I realized, like, um, yesterday was I, me interviewed Little Wayne, and I realized how much of a box that he put himself in. And I realized how much of a box I put myself in. But um, I don't ever want to be in a super box. Mm-hmm. So the fact that I didn't even know DMX is out makes me know that I gotta get back on my shit. Like I gotta, I should've knew that. Like I should, that shouldn't have been a question. Let's do another shot though. Let's do another shot. Like that. Yeah. Let's go. Yo, the lemon pepper, I got lemon pepper? Yeah. You can take a shot of lemon pepper? Yeah, I know that too, man. <laughs> Let's take a shot. Yeah! A lot of motherfucking crackers. Brandy, I get Johnny and a motherfucking Rifkin and motherfucking Steve Rifkin. Now, <laughs> <laughs> Steve Rifkin, this is your interview. So we're going to do something that we implicated new. It's called Quick Time with Slime. Are you ready? Yeah. Sing it, Slime. We're just going to give you one. It's, it just got to just pick one real quick. You just can't not do it, all right? Okay, you just pick, we'll pick one. Pick one what? Pick one. I'm going to give you two choices. All right. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> Briefs or boxes? That's that. I didn't see this coming. MOP, Jesus Mafia. Any of is my favorite record of all time. So it's a great record. It's MLP. a great record. Wu Tang versus the Lips. Damn, that's that's unfair. I mean, they're twins, right? So uh, I can't let you get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see that big one. Is it real quick? No, oh, they were Wu Tang was my first child. Okay. Boom. So Mob D, MOP. Mob D. Boom. Big pun is it? Boom. I can't answer that. Uh, Vegas, Miami. Vegas. Hey. You sure you won't take that back? <laughs> <laughs> you forget that. Stop, stop, stop. Yeah, wait a second. But, you know, Vegas, that's where, Miami. That's where I had the key. Okay. Uh, you had the key. All right, cool. Boom. All right. White woman, black woman. You know that answer. I need you to answer it though. Black one. God damn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Chris committed suicide or Chris did not commit suicide? Chris did not. Tell you what, it's a conspiracy. My fucking phone keeps dropping out of my hand. Um, okay, hold on. Hold on. Let's do it. Okay. Nah, no, it's Jay Z. I'm not answering that. <laughs> Great. I respect that. Uh, Tupac B. I'm not answering that either, but Tupac was my roommate, though. Uh, roommate? Uh, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not it's Yeah, it's not. Yeah, you had the best roommates ever. <laughs> 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 this is Is, not, is this not, after Rock Kim was out? I did just take it from here. So, you, you and Tupac, what happened? His first album. Shh. Jimmy? Hired us. Don't forget, he wasn't on. Yeah, Interscope originally. He was through a guy by the name of Adrian Gregory. Interscope. Adrian Gregory managed Digital Underground. Right. Mm. They signed Pac to Interscope. Mm. So we would do these promotion talks Mm. Thursday to Monday. Mm. 
Mm. Come back sometime Monday. And then we'd have to go back out on Thursday. Tuesday and Wednesday, he's staying at my place for a year. This is in LA? This is in LA, Studio City. Wow. Like a lot of Busta Rhymes told me similar led to the same story. Okay, we're gonna keep playing quick flip, slide or flop. You're gonna Are you ready? Flip flop? Flip flop. You ready? Flip flip. You ready? <laughs> that was a great story, by the way. All right, are we ready? We, uh, we left off two pocket biggie? Yeah. Oh. I feel like you disagree with me. I feel like you don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right. You ready? All right, cool. Boom. Little Kim Foster, bro. Kim. Who? Uh, Kevin Hart or Chris Rock? Wow. I'm going with Chris. I was like, okay. Um, alcohol or lean? <laughs> <laughs> I don't drink. Neither. <laughs> that was great. Uh, quality control music or TDE? Man, so to me, it's two different types of. It's like. Yeah, it's just one question. No, but no, I got to You know, this is. It's it's like bad boy and loud. That's fucking phenomenal. But you got to pick one. <laughs> I'm going with I'm going with top. top, top. Okay, cash money or death row? Cash money. Okay. The, here's the quintessential right now. <clears throat> Eminem, MGK, or G E Z. Eminem. Hey! And that is called the quick time with Sly. No, uh, that was all. I'm sorry. That was all. I'm sorry. I, 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 love, I love our shit. I'm just being honest. So now, we got us all together. Oh, yes. Yeah. Huh? What? What's going on? Do I got a chicken wing? You got a chicken wing over there. I got a chicken wing. A chicken wing? I got a chicken wing. He's shaking the wing. So, yo, so, um, now this is the first loud. Experience. What is it called? A lot of experience. Damn, you named it. <laughs> the loud experience. Mm. Times drinks, champs. Experience. Experience. <laughs> I, I got one more shot left to me before I wrap it up. I want to wrap it up. <laughs> do, you, do you realize what the wrap it up? We'll do the shot, the shot, exit, and speech. Then wrap it up. Yeah. yeah, shot, exit, speech, wrap it up. Yeah. Shot, exit, speech. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's, 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 so, that's safer. It's safe. Right. <laughs> so we ask every Same rapper shot. that comes here, and we ask every you know guest to come here. What is your favorite era in hip hop? Give us a ten minute, ten ten year span, or give us just your fucking era that you like. It doesn't matter. I mean, I'm gonna say my ladder. Okay, and now now his loud era, EFN. Can you sum his loud era? Is that is that, is that a ten year? From yeah. what year to what year? Ninety two to two thousand two. Yeah, it's definitely. Oh, yeah, I think you won that. One. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> I agree. Ninety-two to two thousand and two. What are we saying? The best era? Best era. Yeah. Ninety-two right. to two thousand and two. I, I agree. Yeah. Well, well, hold on, hold on. Actually, no, no. Wait. I gotta say eighty. Let, 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 eighty-eight let, let, to ninety-eight. I gotta say. I Man, I'm probably also biased. Okay. You know, I think the time when I went, but you know, ninety-seven to two thousand seven, that era that was really driven by Rockefeller, Rough Riders. Mm. To me, that was you know, my favorite era. I had a another run mm. from two thousand two to two thousand ten, which mm. might even be bigger than the this is when Banner got it. This is a kind of battle. Yeah, and mm. after all, yeah, you I mean, know, a kind of after, city. after all, yeah, huh? this thing just bought a city. Yeah. Yeah. He, he doing different. He so, bought a city with elect electricity and everything. Right? So. Nah, nah, you, you guys are killing it. Big up to David Banner. He's a big friend of the show. Yeah, Acorn so as well. Yeah. Big guy. So. He might be um, giving us a surprise visit. Oh. David Banner. As we can Let's take some motherfucking shots. SRC Loud motherfucking records. Steve motherfucking Rifkin. Jonathan Rifkin. Motherfucking Randy Acker. We all here. I am going to take this down. <laughs> uh.
I just want you to know, man, you know, uh, in our game, every time people get, you know, 10 years or more, then they want to kick us out of this game. And the thing is, the more you get seasoned with wine, the more better it tastes. Well, that's what I said. The more you get knocked down, the better you get up. Mm. Nobody thought I was good, right? SRC might not have been as cool as Lab, right. but it was just as big, if not bigger. Right. All right. So before we get up out of here, everything is going. Well, how did the health, like, how did the health, like, just Fuck stop? Up? Yeah. Um, like, what was going on? I never went to a doctor. Ever. Like, you're, Ever. You're, you're like really black. Like, that's like, that's <laughs> I didn't go to the doctor for 30 years. Wow. wow. Okay, damn. Fuck that. Yeah, that's really black. Yeah, you, you, okay, continue. Yeah. So, 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 if I went to a doctor, he would tell me my blood pressure was fucked up, my cholesterol was fucked up. Getting divorced, a lot of stress. Stress, yeah. Um, gained weight that I shouldn't have gained. Throwing chairs out the window. Throwing chairs. That, that, was, that was before. So. <laughs> um, so just, I mean, I died three times. Wow. Wait, you say you died three times? Yeah. On <sighs> the table? I mean, where was it? During the table? Emergency room. In the emergency room. Yeah. Man, this you is they this. shackled three times. Uh, the, uh, uh, shackled or shocked? No, shocked. Brother's heart back. Oh, shocked. Do you remember that? So it was Christmas Eve. Six years ago, this past Christmas Eve, I was playing. My oldest son was still in high school, but he was a basketball player. He dunked on me, and he was hanging from the rim, and his nuts was in my face. So I, so I punched him in the face. Not out of anger, I, joking around. I was like, this is the most disrespectful thing a son could ever do to his father. <laughs> so my ex-wife is from Trinidad. So she sees what's going on. And her accent, she starts yelling at me, calling me an animal, this, that. But we're laughing. Yeah. Next thing you know, I can't breathe. Yeah. Right? I'm, and I don't have chest pains, but I have a pain in my back. So I said, maybe I pulled the muscle from swinging. I mean, I had no idea what it was. I said, something's the matter. She goes, just take a shower and go to sleep. It's Christmas Eve. Right. In Trinidad. No, we were in, <laughs> no, we were in Boca. <laughs> oh, okay. no, uh, Close enough, though. It was hard. Yeah. I feel, I feel um, this in Trinidad. This I go, I'm staying in her guest house. Boca's very beautiful, too, as well. I'm staying in her guest house. I call 911, take his annex, and take a shower. They came and said, oh, we got to take you in. They took me in. I remember them um, cutting my shirt, telling me I am having a heart attack. And they said, the doctor, actually, the doctor who was in the emergency room was my father's doctor. Oh, shit. He goes, Do you, are you related to Julie Rifkin? I'm like, yeah. He goes, I'm his doctor. So I felt some type of... Because he lived down here? Who, my dad? Yeah. 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 Um, mm. no, because the doctor was here. Yeah, the doctor was my dad's doctor. So I felt a little relief. And next thing you know, this thing that they put in your throat to keep you breathing, Yeah. I, ri I ripped it out. And... um. Yeah, not a good look knowing that. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of weird. Like yeah. you're talking about your other. But so, you know, if I fucked up my larynx, um, and I was in the hospital for a week, and, and ever since then, you know, God bless me, you know, to just God bless. Amen. Oh, yeah. So Lee, can we say a prayer? <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. Before that. It's Spanish or name? No, that's the, the Jay-Z story. Yeah, man. You guys were leaving without that. <laughs> no, no. Before that, I have to get the Jay-Z story. Because I feel like this was like twice that you tried like... So what what, what exactly happened? So I go back with Dame since he's 16 years old. Dame. Right. Dash. Right. So Dame is managing original flavor. It's hard. With his cousin, Damien. Call. Right. And um, I had a relationship, and I was doing the promotion for Original Flavor. And Were they signed to a label? They were signed to Atlantic. Oh, okay. Oh. So Not Craig Calvin. Craig Calvin wasn't there that long. Craig was there. Wow. That Since long? then? Yeah. 
But he Craig wasn't the boss just, yet, right? He wasn't the boss yet, but yeah. Craig was well, already there. Craig was, there Craig, was my, really. Craig was my connector. Craig is the one that was putting me on all these records. You listen, if Craig was there since original flavor, I'm going to be honest. Craig signed That's Bad crazy. Boys. Bad Boys, Bad Boys. The what you're going to do? No, no original the song. Inner Circle song. Family. In 1992. There should be nobody in that building bigger than Craig. Craig should be the biggest dude in the building. I, he I, is. I, well, he is now. Yeah. That was 1990 something. This was, I'll tell you exactly what oh, so it was. So Julian and well, Mike Kaiser's was, that not Dame was a teenager. Right? Dame, so I'll tell you exactly what it was. I'm asking you, is Julian and Mike Kaiser bigger than Craig or no? No. Julie, okay. no. Kaiser's head of Urban. Um, Julie President is of Urban. COO. And, and Craig, Craig is, is the CEO. All right, there you go, Craig. You deserve that, Craig. Um, all right, I'm sorry. Continue. The day that Christian Leitner hit the shot against Kentucky. Christian Leitner. What year was that, 92? 92. 92. Thank you, Dream That's Sports. when... Um, that's when I met Damien and his cousin Darren. Mm. Darren. Darren died. So, mm. cut to. Big up to Darren here in Denver selling a lot of weed. Yeah. Cut. So, no. And his sister Stacy does. Big that up too. Right. So, cut to 94, 95, you know, whatever it was. Dane, Jay, come to the office. Or maybe just Dane. Mm. And he plays me Jay's album. Can I live? I want to do the, I want to do it. Right, but I have to get permission. That's all I see. No, I have to get permission from BMG to sign it. Was Clyde Davis in there? No, there was um, Strauss Zelnick and Kevin Zinger. So, and I forget who the president was at the time. Joe Galante, I think, um, at, R at RCA. And it was the time, right around the time that I threw the chair, you know, so it was like BMG never let me sign Jet or wow. Rockefeller. So that's wow. the real story. I mean, wow. I would never pass on something like that. Because right. I remember, like, Big Face Gary. He I said, don't know. I, see, I, 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 don't, I don't know Gary. Right. Because Big Face Gary, his assumption was he came to, to you guys um, and you didn't sign him. We, we didn't do it, but I wanted to say, I had, listen, to me, I had the best a &R guys in the business. They brought it to me. I was never going to say no right. if Maddie and Scott Free brought something, right? I signed Punt on the spot without hearing a record because Maddie showed up at the office. Fat Joe's always This is the same Maddie from The Source? Yeah. From yeah. One Side Nine? Yeah. yeah. Right. Maddie C. So that's that's how I signed That's how I signed Punt. Oh, Maddie Riggs. was in the, huh? in the office. I thought Riggs brought him to you. No. I found uh, Punt... Was I was in Chicago with Quincy on the private plane. <laughs> <laughs> As we all do. <laughs> you all do every other day. A guy by the name of Mickey Benson calls me. Mickey Benson. Oh, God, that's my guy. Right? Our rap. Right. Our rap. Um, Mickey calls me with Fat Joe on the phone. I said, Joe, I'm in Chicago. I'll be in New York on Monday. Let's meet Tuesday. From Thursday to Tuesday, I must have got eight to ten calls that I shouldn't sign Joe. Because he's a gangster, he's an extortionist, he's this, he's that. <laughs> Joe comes to the office. I said, before we start the meeting, let me talk to you for a second. I said, I got 10 calls that I shouldn't sign you or punt. Everybody says, you're a gangster, you're an extortionist. And I said, you know what? But I'm a gangster and I love gangsters. Ugh. I said, so we're going to figure That's something out. Let me tell you something. Okay. Swat. <laughs> That's Swat. Let me tell you something, Steve. That's why I love you. Joe is probably one of the closest people to me in life. He told me the same story, word for word, verbatim. There's no way he could have made his side of the story up, and you could have made the side of your story up, and it could be word for word verbatim, the way it is. Now, I just want you to let you know. Thank you. Because it believes me. <laughs> but for real, like, that, like that's that's crazy. But continue. So, mm -hmm. so say I forget. So say we meet. I meet Joe on Tuesday. I'm going back to LA on Thursday. I said, can you come back tomorrow and bring punt? And the meeting's early because I got to catch a flight back to LA. So the meeting say around eleven o'clock. Right. And Maddie, who I shared an office with is in the office. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing here? Now, don't forget, I got a six-figure royalty check 
waiting for him that he hasn't picked up in six weeks. Mad. Mad. Wow. He goes, aren't you meeting Pun? Uh, I'm like, you came for this? Uh, the second they walk into the meeting, Joe uh, and Pun, I said, you got to deal. Who's your lawyer? Everybody's like, are you bullshitting me? I'm like, I'm not bullshitting you. And Matty goes, well, what are you going to do? I said, your job is to make the record and you're here because you want to hear this. Right. And, and that's how the deal was done. I called, their lawyer was Tim Mandelbaum. I called Tim. Tim Mandelbaum. Big old right. Tim Mandelbaum. Um, He's my lawyer at the time, too. And the deal was done within a week. You and did. You, and, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> and, and you thought, did you, do you think, like, because... All right, Joe at the time. Um, well, I'm not even sure Joe was kind of gold at the time. No, he wasn't. He wasn't even gold at the no, time, right? But he was funny as hell. He made me laugh. Yeah. There was one night, I guess Chris was managing him for a minute too, okay. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there was one day me and Chris were on our way to play ball and he had to stop at the studio. Play, you and Chris was on the way to what? Play basketball. Okay, all right. And um, Joe was outside the studio. I don't know Joe at the time. Mm. But he cracked the joke. He did, the window was open. And I, I mean, I was just laughing. So, like I said, I can only judge you for how you treat me. Mm. You, you know, and that's how I'm going to treat right. you. So, I mean, and that's well, how. People I'm literally treat. called you and said, don't I'm, I, I, Yeah, I mean, I don't know who Mickey Bent is told. No, I mean, he's told this story on Drink Camp so many times. It's so great to hear. So, <laughs> yeah, like, say the same nah. story. Because he's told this story. So, we had a meeting. Um, uh. You know Jer- Jeremy Zimmer, the guy from UTA. Okay, yeah. Right? So I, I brought Joe to That's the guy, right? That's the guy. That's the guy I introduced you to. Yeah, that's the guy I got. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So right. Joe told him the story <laughs> the, the other day. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. it's true. Yeah. Goddamn, make some noise for Steve fucking for a kid. <laughs> and then, you know, we took Joe to Vegas with us. That's this because I've been hearing this. Um, you have the keys to a private room in a strip club in Vegas. I mean, I don't know if this it's is back in the days. I mean, it was the Crazy Horse too. Crazy Horse, I knew that. I was yeah, going, yeah. I, I so didn't know if you wanted to our uncle, that our uncle owned it. Your uncle owned it. What kind of uncles? That sounds like, like some old school <laughs> Schultz <laughs> shit, like 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 mafia shit back in the day. That's, I ain't gonna lie, your father. I ain't gonna lie, your father owned a record label. Your uncle owns the car. Uh, what what's going on here? We're good. We're here. No, all right, all right cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. This is the mafia dog no, shit. I'm like, yeah, it's real talk. I respect it. Put that back though. I was saying it in Spanish. Put that back though. Let me tell you something. We had awesome actors in Max, just in case people don't know, man. And we doing it, man. Yo, Steve, man, thank you for taking time out. But let's also thank let's you. big up this motherfucking concert that's going down. What is it going down? And what date is it? 30. January thirtieth, New York City Radio City Music Hall. January thirtieth, motherfucking New York City. The Loud Musical. Experience. The Loud Experience. The Loud Experience. Radio City Music Hall. Mm. Classic. Listen, I'm How many hip hop shows were there? Not many. Tomorrow I'm going to shop for my jacket because it sounds very cold. Because <clears throat> I don't do the cold no more in New York City. I try not to. I checked the weather. They say it's going to be 45 degrees. <laughs> That's cold to me, sir. What was the first <laughs> hip hop show at Radio City Music Hall? What? What was the first hip hop show at Radio City first Music Hall? First LL. I would say the MTV uh, Awards. What, what was the first one? I think it was The Roots. Uh, the no, Roots? The in 2005. Randy which, coming with trivia oh, right now. Beastie, Dang, the Beastie Boys opening up for Madonna. Woo! The Like mm, a Virgin album. I don't know if I'd call that all the way a hip-hop show. Hell yeah! What? Beastie Boys is all the way hip-hop. The well, Beastie Boys participated. Participated. They have hip-hop. But I do. Oh, yeah, man. You're right with that. Where did they get food? They got booed. Yeah, because it was Madonna's crowd. Like they, yeah. you know. Oh, they got booed like Drake at um Tyler um the Korea crowd. What? Tyler the Korea? Yeah, you you know like Drake got booed. He oh, came Drake out. at Tyler's festival. Yeah. Yeah, this is Tyler. No, you said Tyler the Korea. I said Tyler the Korea. You said Tyler the Crocodile, man. Yeah, definitely. All right, what? Well, what? If that makes you feel better. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, that, that. So you saying Beastie Boys dealt? I right, Drake. So you, this is the Drake. Beastie Boys opened up for Madonna 
Uh, but what tour was it? Like, it was like the Like a Virgin tour. Like a Virgin. <laughs> so, touch you know, for the very first time. Yeah, this is this like the same song. This is Beasties yeah, before anybody really knew that. Exactly. They were just like getting hot. And they. Yeah. Burned. But Drake been hot. He's not supposed to be. Listen, He's not supposed to be booed. He, he was not. Did you see that shit? I heard about it. Yeah. I ain't gonna front. The, the, his fans is terrible. Let's, let's just be clear. I don't want beef. No, nah, but Tyler people. responded. Niggas, he he was niggas. dope the way he like he came back at his fan. Yeah, him too. Fuck him. Nah, man. Nah, Tyler was. He was. Steve was Steve. Nah, nah. That part the fuck up nothing. When I tried signing him, Tyler. Yeah. Or Odd Future. Odd Future. Which is fucking ill. Right. The whole crew's ill. Nah, let's beat them up. They drew a swastika. What? What? They did what? Yeah, and I guess they were trying to get a reaction out of me, and it was just like... A real swastika or the Chinese no, swastika? No, the, they drew a real swastika. Where? Where did you swastika? In the, in the conference room, the meeting that I was having with Isn't them. that funny? Oh, wow. Yeah, okay, okay. So I was just like... That's a little too not much. Not funny, yeah. yeah. Not funny. All right, I think this we're in it. Okay. Yeah, we're, we're in it with swastika, right, I guess. Right? So you did <laughs> phenomenal. But let's, let's let it blow. What day is this concert again? This is January thirtieth. Next yeah. Thursday, Radio City Music Hall. Oh, yeah. when this comes out, this Thursday. Yes, this, this Thursday. Yeah. This comes out this coming Thursday. Yeah. yeah. No, when this comes out, it's this Thursday. Oh, okay. No, because yeah, it'd be like Monday or something. Yeah. Like drops. This Thursday, January thirtieth. Yes, and we're gonna get up. We're gonna get us up there. You know, because Steve got the prior play. Wait, come on. Excuse me, Quincy. We're gonna have Quincy on the plate. Yeah, we're gonna, you know, just real quick drink chance, we'll host this and get the fuck up out of here. Quincy's, Quincy's orchestrating the band. Ooh. Ooh. Nah, I'm fucking around with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Steve, man, Jonathan, man, Randy Acker, man, yo, thank y'all for hanging with us. You know, Randy Acker is a part of the, you know, us, but, you know, you guys, for, you know, you know, we really appreciate what you guys did for the business. You're gonna stand, stand tall for your artists. And we respect that. And thank you guys, man. You know what I mean? Thank one, you. One, one million percent. I'm going to take a picture and then uh, drop. drops. <laughs>